Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's Planning and Environmental Committee. Um, for those who are watching online, joining us today, I have planning officers uh, and representatives from the Legal Office, Democratic Services and Highways. I am the chair for today. My name is Councillor Chris Harper. I'm also joined uh, to determine the applications by a group of cross-party councillors who will help me in determining uh, what comes before us today. Could I also please ask if you have a mobile phone that at this point you switch it to silent, please. A few housekeeping rules. If members of the public in attendance need to use the facilities, they are located back through the doors here, through the main doors on this floor. If there is a fire alarm, please leave the building by the nearest fire exit and make your way to the cathedral concourse. First item then, item one is apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chair. We've had apologies from uh, Councillor Amjad Iqbal and Councillor B is attending as his substitute and apologies from Councillor Hussain and Councillor Simons is attending as his substitute. Uh, thank you very much. Councillor B, Councillor Simons, thank you very much for filling in. <coughs> item three then. Is, so item two is declarations of interest. Councillor Simons. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I will take no part in item 22-00823, FUL, because um, I'm going to represent um, Nuber on that. Thank you. Okay, so you will actually go into the public gallery then. Are you happy with that, or would you like him to leave the room? Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Any other declarations? Councillor Hiller. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Item 5-1. Um, I am a, a sitting member of the North Level Internal Drainage Board who are a statutory consultee on this particular application. I'm, I haven't discussed it at all with any of my board colleagues or offered an opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more? Councillor Simons? Sorry, I just realised <coughs> I'm on the board of North Level Drainage as well, so same applies. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's it, we're all over then. Item three, then, is declaration to make representation as a ward councillor. None in this room, yes. Councillor Simons. So I, you can, I just want you to declare it at the moment. Okay, right. I'll come to you in a minute, so hold, hold to that. Okay, item four, minutes of the meetings held on the 23rd of August and the 6th of September 2022. Members are firstly asked to approve the minutes of the meetings held on the 23rd of August. Do I have a proposer and a seconder, please? Proposer, Councillor Hiller. Seconder, Councillor Jamil. Uh, are they a true account? Agreed? All agreed. And the 6th of September 2022. Again, I need a proposer, please. Yes, <laughs> Councillor Hogg and a seconder. Yes. Councillor Jones, all, are they all correct? All agreed? All agreed. Thank you. Right. Item 5, development control and enforcement matters. Item 5.1 uh, relates to land to the east of Ramble Close in Newborough. Uh, please may I ask James Croucher, please, to introduce the item when you're ready. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members of the public, can you all hear me fine? Thank you. Uh, so, thank you, Chairman. Yes, this is uh, an application for full planning permission which has been submit submitted by a registered provider of social housing. Uh, it's land to the east of Bramble Close, and you can see on this drawing here that we have existing residential development on three sides of the application site, predominantly bungalows to the east on Hawthorne Close, predominantly bungalows to the south on Williams Close, and then a modern two-storey residential development at Bramble Close to the west. And then running along the northern site boundary is a B road, that's Thorny Road, which we'll come to shortly. In terms of planning policy, the site is wholly within the Newborough village envelope. And you will see that the land to the west at Bramble Close was a local plan housing allocation for 42 dwellings that has now been completed. In terms of the setting of the site, just some photographs uh, to orient members. So bungalows to the east at Hawthorne Close, bungalows to the south at Williams Close, and then the two-storey properties indicative of Bramble Close to the west. 
the Thorny Road frontage, that's the B road, and you can see the, the lower photograph is the existing site access. You'll see that the site is generally disused and overgrown, with a derelict, uninhabitable dwelling uh, remaining extant currently on the site. So the proposed development itself is 30 two-storey dwellings, a mixture of one, two and three bedroom properties, including access from Thorny Road, a proposed pedestrian link path to Hawthorne Close to the east, and a local area of play uh, generally suitable and designed for toddlers within the site itself. In terms of the tenure of the proposed dwellings, just to pause on this slide, the blue properties would be for rent, the yellow properties would be for shared ownership, and the two pink properties would be for or on the rent to buy scheme. And the numbers on each plot indicates the number of dwellings of the proposed house. So uh, one bedroom cluster homes in the northeastern site corner and a mixture of two and three bedroom properties throughout the rest of the site. The design of the proposed development, relatively contemporary, but consistent in its architectural language and form. I'm just going to run through the various house types. Plots one to four are the one bedroom cluster homes in the northeastern site corner. Plots five to seven are two and three bedroom family homes. Similarly, plots eight and nine, 10 and 11. There's a pattern here, 12 and 13. You'll notice on the rear elevation of the centra, central um, floor plan, on the right hand side we have an oriel window. So that's the triangular window to the third bedroom of that right hand property and that is specifically designed to prevent direct overlooking out of that window and to angle the view solely in one direction. Plots 14 to 16 as we go around the site, again two and three bedroom family homes, 17 to 22, two bedroom homes, 27 and 28, two and three bedroom homes, and 29 and 30 are three bedroom detached properties. In terms of the street scenes, these just give an indication of the uh, flavour internally and externally that the development will present itself. And then in terms of the relationship with existing adjacent properties and land levels, this uh, indicative uh, proposed levels drawing does uh, seek to illustrate, I think, that the finished floor levels of the new homes will largely be uh, the same as the existing bungalows uh, that are adjacent. And some illustrative sections that indicate those relationships. So Chairman, the main material considerations are the principle of development, means of access, both vehicular and pedestrian, and the associated highway safety implications, neighbouring amenities in terms of overlooking, overshadowing and loss of privacy, flood risk and drainage, both in terms of foul and surface water drainage, but also uh, the capacity of uh, the local infrastructure to service the site. And finally, on terms of wider infrastructure, uh, things like education, healthcare, uh, and uh, associated village facilities. In terms of Section 106 contributions, the applicant has agreed in principle to fund uh, or make a contribution towards off-site highway safety improvements on the B road in front of the site and also towards local allotments. Thank you, Chairman. Simons. Do apologise. Thank you very much. Councillor Simons, please, and Councillor Brian Cole, please, if you could join us at the front. Uh, good afternoon, Councillor Simons and Parish Councillor Brian Cole. You have 10 minutes when you're ready between you to address committee. So we'll start when you start. Thank you, Chair. I call this application in due to the serious concerns of the access onto the B1443 Thorny Road, 
PC Highways team are aware of the ongoing issues with this stretch of road, admitting further calming measures are required. Now we plan to have another access a few metres from Bramble Close, adding to the dangers of this road. Also, how is it proposed to stop pedestrians walking along this road towards the pub and the shop? Um, I've seen no evidence to prevent that. Previously, the whole site known as St Martin's Road was allocated 62 dwellings, which included this site and Bramble Close. Bramble Close has 42. Surely these leaves an allocation of 20 properties. A bit surprised, really. Um, this application also has access onto Hawthorne Close, presently a quiet cul-de-sac. I believe this could potentially be an ASB disaster. Arthur Mellows is already capacity. Considering the Ivory Road development in I and Thorny Meadows in Thorny adding another 320 properties to these ever-increasing numbers, where are all these pe pupils going to go? This application is for 30 affordable houses. According to the design statement, could provide in total 126 residents. Given these are affordable houses, could someone explain to me where the where the um, sorry, excuse me, where the adequate bus route is, and also a cycle and pedestrian way into the city? Given they're affordable houses, surely that should be in place. I'm not against development, but these essential services need to be in place to support all residents, not just these extra proposed houses. I would ask this committee to carefully consider this application. Is this application right for this location? I suggest not. Thank you for listening to me. Councillor Cole. Thank you. Brian Cole, Chair of Newborough and Borough Fen Parish Council. No apologies for supporting what's just been said there. The Parish Council has no problem with the development of the site. We feel that the amount of properties being put on the site is way in excess of what the local community can actually support. The village school is already oversubscribed. As already been said, Arthur Mellows, which is the normal feeder school for that, um, is also oversubscribed. We have concerns about the utilities into the village with regards to sewerage and also electricity. Uh, the village suffers uh, from electricity power cuts and this will put further stress on an already stressed system with regards to that. We also have concerns about the Thorny Road. When the original um, um, site that was developed to the west of this, the Parish Council then actually objected and commented on the fact that they should not use Thorny Road to enter or access that site. For some of the very reasons that have been said, it has no footpath. The Parish Council have been working with City Council officers with regard to that, and we are told there isn't a viable option apart from to put the footpath on the other side of the road. This would mean that school children who managed to get into Arthur Mello's school would then have to cross over the road, walk down the road, and cross back over the road to get the bus uh, into the school. Clearly not a viable option uh, to take place. That was ignored or was not taken into account, and we now have children walking down that road because children will always take the shortest route, many of us would, to get to the school bus or the local shop. And the result of that, that's created a hazard, and I would suggest that if this development were to go ahead in its current form, that would add um, to an already dangerous setup that we have in place, which we feel is only waiting for some kind of further accidents and fatalities to happen as a result. There's already been fatalities on that road. I've already mentioned the, the, the school, but the facilities in the village for the amount of houses proposed for the site is also in excess of what we feel could actually be supported. We're not objecting to the development of the site. We just feel that the amount of houses being proposed to go on that site is too great for the actual local amenities. There'd be doctors, there's no doctors in the village anymore, um, and that's already very, well, to be fair, most doctors it's difficult to get an appointment at, but believe you me, it's exceedingly difficult. The bus service is one bus every two hours, doesn't run at weekends, doesn't run in the evening. Um, there are issues with the bus per se anyway, with the route it goes. It takes over an hour to get from the village into Peterborough, not five or someone who hasn't got a car to get to work. So for those reasons, we would like to recommend that as it stands, this is not approved. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, members, would you like to ask questions of the councillors, please? Councillor Jamil. Thank you. Um, can you shed a bit more light? You talked about the electricity and there being problems with it. What, what kind of problems are we talking about? Power cuts. Uh, we're told by, forgive me, is it Western Electricity or whatever that's uh, responsible for supporting the grid in the village, um, that there are various issues with regards to the supply of electricity. Um, and it, it boils down to we, the demand uh, at times means that the, the, the power is cut. It's for short periods, okay. and, and I'm talking seconds here, but it doesn't matter. There's a power cut, and we're going to, unless that is addressed, we're just going to add to that issue. Yeah, I think there's been four that I know of in the last couple of weeks, to be honest. Councillor Hogg. Just a couple of points. Um, just as you're saying about the, the, the footpath, um, but there is going to be a footpath through to Hawthorne uh, Road so that they would be able to walk down that way to go to the village shop, certainly. So Can I answer that? That is quite right, there will be. Unfortunately, the way this plan has, that the quickest way for children to get to those shops, and we can do all we want to try and encourage them to use that route and to get the school bus, they're going to go the shortest route. That's what children do. And the shortest route is down Thorny Road, where there's no footpath. Uh, and secondly, just the, the thing about the electricity, surely the, by the, the, this development going forward, that would then place more pressure on the electrical yeah. electricity company to, to get that sorted for the village. So actually, in some, place, in some respects, it could actually be a good thing for the village? It could be, if it's put in place before its development, not after. So yes, but it's a guarded yes. Yeah, I think that's an unknown, isn't it? Anybody else? I'd like your response, really. Um, in the report, school places are not shown to be an issue. So what, what's your view on that? Because it says there's capacity in the primary and there's capacity in secondaries. I know Arthur Mellows is your main catchment secondary, but yeah, yeah it does sound report other schools. Sorry, well, other schools. I think if you, if you read the report, it does say Arthur Mellows is at capacity. That's right, but it does say other schools can take it. I'm just wondering what's your view on that. Yeah, no, well, there's Norwood, as you know, that's just opened, um, but that's obviously Manor Drive, uh, yeah. and also for the uh, Norwood development. That basically that school is for that, um, yeah. and it could pick up some of the eye. I agree, but um, it's not intended for Newborough. Um, pupils to go to Norwood. Can I just add to that? There is no transport to those schools. Okay. There's another issue. There's no cycle or walking route, safe walking route to that school either. To, to be fair, there is no walking route out of the village. All cycle route out of the village. It just doesn't exist. Okay. One more question. Doctors, you mentioned doctors. Um, and again, in the report, it says the doctors are taking on patients. So again, what's your view on that? How many quizzing you say one thing and the report says another? Yeah. The doctors can take on all the patients they want. It doesn't mean they're going to get an appointment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's currently closed. Yeah, um, the, the, there was a doctor in the village, and my understanding is that that doctor has now pulled out of the village. So the nearest doctors now would be in Eye or Thorny. Um, so that in itself would create a problem. Or does create a problem to be fair but again the, the key issue there with the doctors is the doctors can be taken on the patients but they're, they're just it is not possible to get an appointment we all know what it's like phone phone when the when the surgery opens you phone five minutes after there's no appointments bring back tomorrow this would actually make that issue um well it wouldn't improve it make the issue worse and i've seen nothing from the doctors uh, that would actually make me change that view okay thank you um, I've got nothing else. Anybody else got anything on for the councillors? No. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Councillor Simons, if you can stay within the public area now until we're finished. Okay. Okay, could I ask now Mr Taylor, Chris Taylor and Trevor Edwards, please, to come to the front. Uh, welcome to the committee meeting. You're very welcome. Um, 
just so as uh, you know, when we start, if you could please introduce who you are, so as the committee can understand, uh, can address you properly, and also make note that you've got five minutes between you to address committee. The time will start when you start. Okay, so up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for um, in August 2019 for seven days. Um, during that period, um, the, 80, the 40, 85th percentile, given that it's a 30 mile an hour speed limit, was 47 miles per hour. Um, more than 91% of the th uh, 30,000 vehicles that went down that week uh, were speeding, 91%. Um, the top speed recorded was 95 miles an hour, and there are hundreds of vehicles going down that road every day in excess of 60 miles an hour. Um, the ch chicanes were introduced before the speed limit was dropped to 40 miles an hour, from 40 to 30, and they weren't doing a very good job when they were first built because of the size of the farm machinery, vehicles, tractors, etc. combine harvesters, they were limited to how narrow they could make the gaps. So it's never really worked when it was 40 miles an hour, and it certainly doesn't work, work now. Um, the Thorny Road might just be a B road, but it actually links the A16, the A47, and the A15. It means that you can tr travel around the city without actually going into the city to join these major arteries. So while we call it a B road, um, it's a very, very busy and fast moving road where the speed limit is not observed. Um, as if a sign might have, oh, there's no footpath along there, which has been mentioned before. Um, it was almost like a sign from God on the 27th of August this year, just seven weeks, ago, seven weeks ago, a speeding vehicle lost control, clipped a chicane, mounted the curb, traveled 60 meters down the verge, and, came, and taking out signage, and actually collided with the proposed entrance of this development. So we have vehicles and out of control, driving down the verge, in, and coming to rest. I've got photographs of it here, and you can see the, the derelict house in this photograph here behind you. I know you didn't want to see those. Um, I've got one, minutes, yeah. no. one, more thing, one more thing I'd like to add. Um, just, hold, just hold on a second. Just get, yeah, Dan, please. Just sorry. Yeah, just say um, two and a half minutes has just gone now. So. Can I just add this last thing? Um, it was touched on by Councillor Cole. Um, there's a child earlier this year, an infant, in one year old, um, managed to escape an open garden um, gate and ran 230 metres down the carriageway. It was stopped by a by a pedestrian, uh, a motorist pulled over and, and, and basically put, brought that child to safety. So while we have a pedestrian link produced, um, it, it's not going to stop a child of, of one year old or two or children from going onto the road. And I think that's a public safety issue and we need to address that. My advice is to use the entrance that's going through into Hawthorne Close um, for both vehicle and pedestrian use and do away with the entrance onto Thorny Road altogether. Thank you. So could you just press your mic on at the bottom so we're recording it? That's it. Good afternoon, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Trevor Edwards. I'm a resident in Hawthorne Close, and I'm here to sort of represent our local guys in the area, ladies. Um, our main question is why 30, 30 dwellings on this little site? In your report in number 5.3, Design and Layout, You've mentioned Bramble Close, 42 houses, 1.8 hectares, 23 dwellings per hectare. The application, 30 dwellings, 0.9 hectares, 33 dwellings per hectare, which is almost 50% more in that little area. Now, Bramble Close is already the most frequented hectare in, in, the, in our village. We've got 810 dwellings with an average of 20 dwellings per, per hectare in, in the village, if you took an average of the whole lot. Um, so what we are saying is why 50% more in, in this little area? Um, surely that cannot, cannot be done. Um, so what I did in the immediate vicinity, I'll just do a little map. The green bit is the current plot. That's the same hectare as that side, same hectare as that side. That's got 20 um, dwellings per hectare, and that one's got 17 dwellings per hectare. And we're trying to do uh, 33 dwellings in that green area, and that's just, for me, I don't understand that how you, how you want to do that. Um, 
I'll just give you guys a map you wouldn't have a look at the end of it. I'm um, afraid so they should have been in before now. We can't accept them now, the drawings at the last minute, because the okay. committee needs to have time to sit and so contemplate it's, overnight, it's okay. so anyway, if you can't bring them to the meeting. The in yeah. those areas is can, can you stop? Sorry. Yeah, they, can, they have to have time to look at what evidence you put forward, and that's the day before the latest, really Friday. To bring it to the meeting, unfortunately, I can't allow a committee to see that because that will stop them listening to what you're saying and what the officers are saying. Okay. So, unfortunately, I can't see them. I, you've got your point across. I'll let you do that. Okay. But we can't let you have the photos around, all right? Okay, so that's... And just finally, um, if the pedestrian therapy is going to go through Hawthorne Close, the, our pavement is in a terrible state. I mean, we've got a lot of elderly people with wheelchairs and that. They can't even go on the pavement. They've got to go onto the, onto the main road. And if we've got another 60 people going to be walking up and down and whatever, and they can't walk on the pavement, there's going to be more traffic problems and all the rest. With so we're just hoping that if it is going to be, can the pavement be redone and refixed, please? And lastly, doing these buildings, it's because of the subsidence in the, in the area, there's going to be a lot of piling. And um, some of our neighbours have had terrible cracks from the previous piling in Williams Close. So we want some insurance against our houses cracking if they do the piling, please. That's our request. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just taking it off just for a second. Okay. Um, okay. Members, questions, please. Yes, Councillor Hogg. Uh, just a question for uh, Mr Edwards. Um, as a resident of Hawthorne, your uh, colleague here has suggested that it might be better off um, having the vehicle access to that road, uh, do you have a kind of response to that? We, we're totally against that. It, it's just a nightmare for another 60 years. It's not just the cars, it's the delivery vans and the whatever, it's gonna be a nightmare, we wouldn't be able to. And if you look at the road, it, the way it goes, it's, it's gonna be very dangerous as well. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor Sharp. Question for you, Mr. Edwards. Um, you made reference to the to the um, development density and your concerns about the density. Now, the officers in the report have come back and 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 a quote they're avoiding a layout which would feel cramped or confined. They believe there's su sufficient space between the developments. So I'm just interested in what specifically around that development density y you see as a concern, given that we're only talking one, two, or three bedroom properties as opposed to what might have been there. In alternatives. I hate to catch you, can you use the mic? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to this, I do apologise. Um, it's the density of the people in the area and, and, and everything. It, we, uh, the infrastructure is not that great, as, as a lot of people have said, sort of thing. And it's just, we feel it's a lot of houses. And, and why just double the amount or 50% more in, in that little area? I mean, if it was the same as everything else, we'd be happy with it. We're not anti, anti the houses, it's just the amount of houses. Sorry, just to clarify, so I can come back on that, David. So you talk about in terms of density or the impact on infrastructure and the number of the people. So it's not so much, are you saying it's not so much the density of the housing, it's the volume of residents in the in the area and the impact on the infrastructure? Is that what you're saying? Well, to me, it's the same thing. I mean, if you've got 30 houses, you're going to have, if you have half the amount of houses, you've got half the amount of people. And, and, and you know, I'm trying to say that's, that's the way it is. It's, it's just, sorry, it's just that my numbers just work like that, sorry. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. And, and do you envisage, uh, you, I think you mentioned, forgive me if you didn't, you said 60 people. Do you envisage people not having space on the pathway to be able to get by each other, whether they're in wheelchairs, elderly, or whatever? Is that something that you... I think if this, the, not everyone's going to be walking at the same time, but the pavement is, I've got pictures here, but I'm not allowed to show you, but there's, it's in a terrible state. So, I mean, there's holes and dips, and the people can't push prams on there, or they can't take wheelchairs on there, or mobility scooters on there, so they all have to go on the main road, which is, there's cars on the main road, and it's dangerous. So if we've got a whole lot of more people doing the same thing, it's dangerous now, never mind if the new guys come, like, you know? That's my answer to that. Any further questions? Councillor Rush. Thank you, Jim. Mr Taylor, you said you'd like to use Hawthorne Close as the, as the entrance for vehicles. Have you consulted the residents of Hawthorne Close to see if they'd be happy with that? Um, sorry, Councillor, I haven't actually consulted with the uh, residents. My principal concern is public safety 
um, the shortest route to the pub and shop and the bus stop for children in the mornings is via Th um, th along Thorny Road, B1443, there is no footpath there. Um, and that means that if you're running late for a bus um, or you're coming out of the pub at night and you're slightly inebriated, are you going to walk 575 metres to your house or are you going to take the shorter route of only 300 metres? So you block that entrance off and there's no alternative. Um, I haven't mentioned it earlier, but there's also police concerns with footpaths going off. So if somebody goes into a street chased by the police in a vehicle, they can get out and run through alleyways, and you've got that situation here as well. So I just think that you've got an, act, an entry point that the proposal, development proposals have managed to secure the land. It's wide enough for a road, and it's wide enough for a footpath. Might just be single file for a few meters um, for a vehicle, um, but it is wide enough. Why have they gone to all that expense to achieve that piece of land and not use it for both pedestrian and vehicle access? I know what the residents are going to think. They don't want all the extra traffic, but we're only talking about a total of 60 houses um, in that it would have just be one big cul-de-sac of 60 properties, and there's plenty of cul-de-sacs around Peterborough with more than that. So I don't think it's a big issue, but safety is the, my paramount concern here. Councillor Hiller. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair, and, and through you. Um, uh, just to clarify in my own mind, we, we, you, you seem to be a little bit at odds over, over the public safety element of your objection in, in that you seem to be majoring on public safety. That, that seems to be your um, real concern here, access onto the, uh, onto the B11443, and, and yet your statement two minutes ago was you would be happy with the development if it had less houses. Now, and you did say that. So presumably, you, you would be happy with those less houses still having access and egress on onto the B1443. Could, could you just clarify that sort of juxtaposition of thought for me? It, it, I may be misunderstanding what you're saying, but that, that seemed to be where you were both coming from. Th thank you, thank you, Chair. I, I would be happy with less houses still access onto the B. Yes. Uh, Councillor Sharp. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, just looking for a point of clarity because you mentioned just now in terms of the footpaths and a concern from the police about the antisocial behaviour. Just wonder where that's come from because any reference I can see is Craig's Leonard report where the police designing uh, crimes office and they raised no concerns about the footpaths. So I just wonder where that point came from because I, I can't see the report. So apologies if I missed it. Um, certainly, um, my, I've been a parish councillor for three years and I've worked with Councillor Cole together with the City Council um, at a great many meetings, planning meetings with uh, the infrastructure team, highways infrastructure team, um, and it has come up in one or two of our conversations with them that, um, that the, uh, the access into uh, Bramble Close, which was is the same sort of thing, you've got a, a, a roadway coming in and you've got a footpath coming out the other side. And that's come up in conversations with them, that it is, I thought it was widely recognized and understood, but it has been brought up in those meetings. So that's all I can say, sorry. Anybody else got any questions? No? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Return to the public gallery, thank you. <coughs> and I call now Peter Wilkinson, please, to the front. Welcome, Mr. Wilkinson, to committee. Uh, you will have six minutes because the last one's had six. We went over a little bit, so I'll give you the same amount of time if you should need it to address committee when you're ready. I'll keep it briefer than that, don't worry. My name's Peter Wilkinson, and I'm the agent for this scheme. As members will know from their visit, the site is embedded in the village of Newborough, with housing development on three sides and Thorny Road to the north. It has little intrinsic merit in itself being essentially abandoned land with one derelict house, flat and with some straggly fruit trees within and, a, 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 and, along, um, and around trees and bushes along the perimeter of the site. The landscape master plan proposes that wherever possible these will be retained. 
A two metre high close boarded fence can be provided, but this will be subject to individual discussions with the adjacent landowner, landowners so as to retain as much of the boundary trees and bushes as possible. The only tree of any substance on the site is a yew near the front, directly abutting the derelict property. As to the scheme itself, it's for 30 units, as you know, and as you've heard, it's a 100% affordable scheme, 17 social rent, 11 shared ownership, and two rent to buy, to buy and it's a one to three bedrooms. <coughs> this is particularly important as other recent schemes in the area, for example, Bramble Close to the west, provided no affordable housing. It also means that 13 of the homes are aimed at first time buyers uh, to allow them to get onto the property ladder. The density of the scheme is only 33 dwellings per hectare is, and is appropriate for the site, in my professional opinion. It achieves, as a minimum, all the appropriate standard privacy distances, adequate space around the houses, and satisfies the parking standards. And overall, it creates with the access, the focus within the site of the open space, and a pedestrian link to Hawthorne Close, I would say a well thought through scheme that creates its own sense of place. This link through to Hawthorne Close is important as it provides a shorter, more direct connection to many of the facilities in the village, from the school, the doctor's surgery, village hall and pharmacy, as well as the shop. As there is not the space legally to provide a footway adjacent to Thorny Road, this link becomes of additional importance. All the statutory consultees, from drainage, foul and surface, and which there are five consultees, would you believe, two highways are happy with the scheme. The Education Authority is content that sufficient space exists in the local schools, while the development will assist the sustainability of commercial services such as the shop and the pub. Longhurst, who are the registered housing provider, have offered to make a contribution of £20,000 as part of improving the speed reduction measures along Thorny Road, which would benefit the whole village. In my opinion, this is an excellent grant-supported scheme, bringing 30 much-needed affordable, affordable homes to Peterborough, and specifically Newborough. I do hope you can approve it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Wilkinson. Uh, questions, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair, and through you. Um, the only thing I did notice about the ingress and egress to the site onto Thorny Road yeah. was at the moment, you basically, if you're in a manual car, you'd virtually have to do a hill start. Will that be kind of evened it, out? Yeah. You know, you've talked about the ground fall out of, of the, the site so they're not overbearing. What are you going to do about that road so that nobody's hill starting onto effectively a potentially busy main road? Um, I mean, obviously you're right and the, the level is adjusted. It didn't need to be just adjusted that much, and the Highway Authority are actually very comfortable with it. So it will be... Yeah, marg it's only about three, 400 mil, that's all you need to do, actually. But it will be? It will be, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, it would never get adopted otherwise. No, yeah. Anybody else? Councillor Sharp, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a point of clarity, see, the £20,000 you refer to as a contribution from traffic on it, that's against the 170000 cost in the report, or is that something different? No, that's part of that, because the, the 170000 if it is 170000 because clearly you can do partial elements of the scheme, would benefit the whole village, and clearly this development, it would be totally inappropriate for it to stand, you know, the whole cost. In fact, as 20,000 compared with the number of people in the village is actually an exaggeration of amount of money, if you see what I mean. Very badly presented, but if I, if if I is that understandable? Because I, I, so. I think if I follow up with the yeah. manager, is okay. so you're, you believe the 20,000 pound is a fair contribution Correct. to the overall scheme in relation to the development impact on the village? Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Jamil. Um, speakers earlier um, alluded to the fact that there's some 
danger of subsidence and some you know homes when they're being built you know their walls end up being cracked what reassurance can you give us that that won't happen here um i think the most appropriate uh, thing is for a condition to be placed on the development that asks for the method of uh, piling if there is any piling is uh, agreed beforehand there are two or three different methods of doing it don't ask me the detail because i'm not a structural engineer but there are and that can be conditioned if you wish any further questions no. okay thank you mr wilkinson Okay, we'll move straight into questions to officers. Uh, Councillor Hogg. So I just wanted to address some of the um, the issues that uh, around the the, uh, the B road, um, specifically the, the footpath, but also um, the con the concerns around um, travel speeds along that road. Um, are we kind of satisfied that a that the um, the scheme that the one hundred seventy thousand pound scheme. Um, is something that, that's going to um, alleviate that si this situation considerably. Uh, but also, what are the um, what are the implications of, of being able to put a footpath? Is is a path able to be put in along that road, or is that not possible? I just wanted to kind of just get a, an idea of, of of those two elements. Sarah, are you going to come in on that one, Fireways? Thank you, Chair. Through you. Um, the I'm I'm not directly involved in the, um, the the scheme that's been drawn up for the uh, the site, so I can only answer to the best of my knowledge. Um, the my understanding is that the the brief that our consultants were given for preparing this, the the scheme was to look at the existing speeding issues and a traffic calming scheme in the area of the existing one to try and bring those speeds down to an acceptable level for the, the 30 mile an hour zone. Um, in terms of the provision of a footway along Thorny Road, my understanding is that because of the large drain on the southern side of Thorny Road, there isn't physically enough space without substantial engineering works to retain any footway, which would be extremely expensive. Um, that you, you don't physically have the space along there to be able to construct a footway to highway standards. Councillor Hogg, does that satisfy your question? Yes. Anybody else? Questions for officers? Councillor Jamil? Um, in terms of the access into the site, um, how much... Because what one of the, the, the fears is that it's it's not big enough and in turning out how different is that from any other that we've given to in terms of new 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 developments um the 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 access that's that's proposed is um is fairly similar to those that you see on on the majority of new developments i mean you can you can see on the drawing on on screen it's it's relatively comparable to the one for Bramble Close. Um, as part of the assessment that we would do at a later stage, um, if the roads are offered for adoption, then um, if, if things needed to be adjusted slightly to make it work better, then that would be, be looked at at that time. So um, the, the principles of, of kind of the geometry of the access as, as proposed is, is not fundamentally different from what we'd expect at, at other sites of this nature. Councillor Hiller. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I'm picking up on Councillor Jamil's question um, and your response that this similar to other comparable sites of a similar size, similar nature, but we, we are actually talking about the B1443, um, it, it is a, I would say notorious, is probably too strong a word, or is it? I don't know. It's a very awkward road. I travel down that road regularly from, from my ward. The current chevrons, um, the sort of cutting things and the falling away of the side of the road, the speed we've heard, the um, commentary 
from the objectors about the average speed um, over a period of a week or so, one vehicle traveling in excess of 90 miles an hour, probably a one-off as it was one vehicle, but certainly many vehicles, it appears, in excess of 60 miles an hour. It isn't a normal road with respect. So to compare this with um, the access of a normal um, site of this, this development is wrong. My question to you is, have you every confidence that the safety here isn't being compromised <coughs> by the vehicle access and egress from this particular site onto that road? Thank you. Um, sorry, I think the, the, the phraseology that I used possibly wasn't, wasn't the best there, Councillor. I apologise for that. The, um, the geometry of the, of the access is one thing, but then we, we've also considered the <coughs> available visibility to see approaching vehicles, um, and the, the site access has also been subject to a road safety audit as part of its design, um, and that hasn't raised any safety concerns with the access in that location. Um, and the available visibility is actually in excess of what would be expected for this um, for the average speeds that were quite earlier in the um, from the speed survey so it's more than we would normally expect to be provided for an access in this location if you just took it as a 30 mile an hour road um, they've, they've actually got visibility that's um, that's in excess of the the required distance for the 47 miles an hour speed that vehicles were traveling uh, thank you chair and thank you for that response i'm satisfied with that response thank you thank you any further questions <coughs> right enough time now we'll then move to debate then please so who would like to start debate Uh, I've got Councillor Hiller first, then Councillor um, Thank you, Chair, for the, uh, for the opportunity. I've, I've, I've thought about this um, uh, much over the, um, over the weekend since we had the site visit on Friday. And um, it is a big site, actually. Um, it, it, I don't know, maybe it's just, just an optical illusion, but it appears certainly a lot bigger when you're standing in the middle of that site than than perhaps one would think of a site for 30-odd for houses. My, my primary concerns, I think, to a great degree, have been uh, alleviated, Chair, uh, members. Um, my number one concern, I have to say, similar to one of the objectors, was, was the access onto this road. Um, I know, as I said before, Chair, I know the road well, and it, and it, and it is a difficult road um, at, at any real speed, but certainly, at some of the speeds these idiots drive down this road is just beggar's belief, frankly. Um, and I, I do have, still have concerns over that access. The agent um, was quite rightly saying how he would uh, raise the level of the, um, the site entrance in, in response to a question. Um, okay, I think it needs to be looked at very carefully and I would like that, should this be approved, for that to be conditioned in as much as um, it, it needs to be right for people coming out of that site in forward gear. And, and, and I think the comment was made, it's a little bit like a hill start. I, I get that. And in a manual vehicle with, you know, with a couple of kids in the back, maybe distracted driver, that, that could be difficult. Um, the density of the development, I don't have a problem with, frankly. Um, it, it, it sits well. I think that it's, it's a well-designed development, in, in my opinion. My big plus on this site is the affordable housing provision. Um, you know, it's 30 desperately needed affordable properties of varying tenure. And I think that that really, really is a big plus for this site. Um, the applicant is, is a very well established uh, RSL, a quality RSL, I'm sure will build a good property and maintain a good property in this site. Um, to a great degree, similarly to my own ward, when new developments are being proposed, it, it is a very much a fear of the unknown type approach uh, by local residents. That's not to belittle the concerns, of course not, and I understand people being concerned because at the moment there ain't nothing there, 
and in potentially in a year or so's time you could have 30 odd houses there I, I think on balance, and it is a little bit of an on balance with me, Chair, on balance I will be supporting this application for the reasons I've outlined. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hiller. Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Chair. I'll turn you. Um, so um, I find myself agreeing with Councillor Hiller here on um, more or less all the, well, in fact, actually all, all of the points that he's made um, regarding this site. I think we need to. Um, as the uh, the agent has suggested, maybe make a condition regarding the the piling options to make sure that that uh, existing uh, properties are protected from that. Um, I I do take on board that that, that the that, you know the B road does seem to have an issue in terms of speed, um, but you know if this if doesn't if this doesn't go ahead, that that ex that's still going to exist. That you know that this this. Um, this development's not going to add to the speed problem along that road. If anything, um, you know, with cars slowing down to access the the site, um, it, it's going to slow down cars that are coming along that road anyway. So, I, I think you know, and also the fact that because there is a large number of um, uh, properties in that location, it's going to add weight to um, you know this scheme going forward. Is they're putting twenty thousand pounds into the pot of that £170,000 scheme, but it's also going to add weight to, to the need for that scheme. So I think in some respects it's going to, um, it's going to benefit, this, this site will benefit the, you know, the rest of the village in that regard. Um, I also think in terms of the, um, the electricity um, supply, the fact that there's uh, this number of properties being added to, that the, 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 the company is going to have up to upgrade um, the supply into the village in order to supply this number of homes. So again, I think the village will will find that they will get a uh, a better service from from the. It seems up to um, that they're having problems, which is something in this day and age that really shouldn't be happening. Um, so I would hope that with this development coming online, um, the, the supply company will will be upgrading uh, the grid um, for the village as a whole. Um, and as as Councillor Hill has said, uh, you know we're in dire need of, of, of more social housing, um, and not just social housing in, in the city centre, but but out out in villages as well. There are people presumably that, that live in the village that would you know that, that have got um, children or not so much children, but um, adults um, who are living at home that would like to you know put their foot on the on the property ladder. And this um, this development does does certainly give. Um, you know, through the, the shared ownership scheme, uh, a, a, a real chance of, of them being able to do so maybe earlier than they could if they were looking to the private sector. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, and it also in terms of this, the layout of this uh, site, I'm, I'm very familiar with uh, a, a property, uh, a, a scheme that uh, Longhurst have done in I Green. Um, this actually seems far more generous in terms of the, um, the size of the gardens and the layout of, of the, the houses. So um, I would commend the, the Housing Association on a, on, a, on a really well put together scheme. Um, so yes, I will be um, supporting this application. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I understand the concerns of the residents and the former councillor. I don't share them. Um, one of the things, as I saw when I visited the site, obviously, was being able to get out onto that road. My fears on that have been assuaged, and I think Councillor Hiller's elegant, uh, it sometimes is the fear of the unknown, Councillor Hogg said, it isn't actually going to change the speed that people drive down there. And indeed, maybe, hopefully, the people who do travel down, because there will be people coming in and out the site, also, as, uh, as, as Sarah from Highway said, is how far can you see up and down the road? And if there's no parked cars along there, it's a pity that there can't be a pathway on that side, then it should give plenty of visibility. And um, the site itself, as everybody who attended last week, when I was on the site, I was actually surprised that there was, in fact, only 30 houses going on there. And the metier for me is, could I live there? And the answer is a straight certain yes. So most certainly I'll be 
supporting this application and uh, going with officer recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Anybody else wish to? Yeah, Councillor Rush. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I still have concerns about the footpath link into Warthorn Close. We have got established properties in there and to put a footpath there, which we've seen many places over at Peterborough can cause a, lot, a rat run, um, and especially at night time if people are coming back to the pub. <coughs> um, but I say I still have concerns, but I'm to be persuaded about the what to vote for, whether it's for or against. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to? Yes, Councillor Jones. I, I, I think the can I just make the comment? I think the pub would be highly delighted to think that there were people beating a path to it on a, a regular basis, the way most pubs are these days. I think they'd probably lay on a minibus if they thought they were going to come in numbers. Uh, that's that's my only comment. So hopefully the people there will indeed be using the facilities, whatever they are. Thank you. Anybody else? Be interested to hear anybody else's. Uh, View on this? We've only got four at the moment. Anybody else want to enter into the debate? Councillor Jamil. Thank you. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, when, when I came here, um, I, I was in two minds. Um, and now my main concern was the access and the, the piling, or, or as, as we, we've already discussed. So for me, my, my fears for this site have been allayed. Um, and I, I, I just believe it's, you know, it's, it's a landlord or the developer that's done, I'll call it good quality work around the city. So I think this will be no less than that. So for me, I'm persuaded and I will be going with officer recommendation on this. Thank you. Anybody else? No, okay, I can see. No more hands, so I'm going to go, do I get a proposal at all from, a, from anybody? Oh, actually, before we go any further, there's some clarification that um, Sylvia's going to give us. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, in relation to the questions raised during the debate, I um, just want to clarify three things. Um, first of all, Councillor Hiller, you asked about um, attaching a condition in relation to levels across the site in order to achieve the change in gradient to um, form the new access. Um, there are... Uh, there'll be two controls in place over that. Um, first of all, condition 19 is a condition requiring details of cross sections and um, spot heights um, to cover the, the changes in gradient, both in relation to the buildings and the carriageway. So that, that's one level of control. But as Sarah said, should the road be offered for adoption, then there'll be um, measures in there to make sure that the, the gradient is to a standard that the council would adopt. Um, so I don't think that condition is, uh, the condition's already in place, uh, condition 19. Um, however, in relation to methods of piling, yes, we can add a condition to those that are listed in the report uh, to require details of methods of piling to be submitted and approved by the local planning authority. And then just finally, in, in relation to the, the figure of £20,000 that the, the agent mentioned as a, as a contribution to highway safety measures, um, from our conversations with the, the highway authority, that has not been, been fixed. However, as you'll see in the report, the recommendation is subject to a Section 106 agreement, and one of the purposes of that agreement is to provide for an amount towards the traffic calming. So whilst the figure we believe hasn't been fixed at this point, that will be done through the Section 106 agreement process. Okay. Right, so we'll step back a little bit for, for any questions before we move to proposal, okay? Councillor Hogg. I, I just wanted to sort of address the, um, the concern with regard to the level in terms, you know, um, I'd rather not wait to the point of Look at seeking adoption that we realise that maybe things aren't the way they are. I just wanted to, and I'm sure that is the case, but I just want to kind of underline to make sure that the conditions are in place at, at the build stage rather than the adoption stage. Yes, I confirm that would be the case. Okay, one last chance for to enter the debate then before I go to the proposal. Means you've got that information added. Brought anything else up? So. 
must have say from my own point of view that um, I think um, all the concerns and questions as much as possible have been answered and um, and overcome. My biggest concern, and I think you, you're all there, is the is the road. And I can only urge that highways um, hopefully take this money and find further funding and get this road um, quietened. Uh, you know, or at least some sort of chicane further down to, to help alleviate the speeds. Pretty frightening, some of these speeds that we've been told. But I accept that the visibility display, et cetera, is, is enough, in your, in your opinion, to, uh, to see far enough down the road. So, to a proposal then, please. Councillor Hiller, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Mem members, um, my proposal, um, as you may have surmised, is, is to support the officer's recommendation. I, I thank um, Mrs. Bland for that um, uh, clarification uh, on the Condition 19 and the fact that when it is adopted eventually, when it's brought up to a standard that we can adopt as a local highways authority, then that would be uh, one of the criteria in, in, in that instance. So, so thank you for that. Um, could I just, before I do offer the proposal, Chair, just um, compliment um, both Councillor Cole and um, Ward Councillor Simons for bringing this before the committee. I think it's one of those development proposals that is contentious. It needs to be aired. You, I know you're very keen, Chair, on having a proper debate on applications like this, and I, I do thank those two councillors um, for bringing it to the committee. Um, it, it's often the case that these things can go through without any objection from, from officers, as it appears that we have here. They can go through on the nod, and I think it needed to be discussed, and these points needed to be aired. And, and according to my proposal, hopefully the, 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 this proposal will, uh, will go through. Um, so the proposal is um, that we adopt the uh, officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. And a seconder, please. Councillor Jones. Okay, we have a proposal and a seconder. Um, all those in favour? Uh, are you going to ask a question? I, I just wanted to ask, uh, 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 is um, Councillor Hilly willing to add the, the, the piling uh, condition to, to the, uh, the application? Um, I hadn't, um, but I can do if that is a particular concern of the members. I, I would suggest that would be a, a majority view rather than my own view. Okay. Um, Councillor, could you amend your proposal, please, if that's the case? Happy to amend you. Okay. So you're happy with that? We've got a proposal. It's been seconded still, so we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Okay. Just checking no abstentions. Okay, in that case, the vote is unanimous and the application is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, just bear with us, everybody, please, just while we change um, officers. Um, if you really need a quick one, then I'm quite happy. Um, but it, we were going to break at the end of the next one. But if you want to go now, go. Five minutes. <laughs> now, 22 then, please. Remember, if you do leave the room, we're still in live uh, session, so do not discuss any other cases.
somebody would just shut the door? Thank you. It's just sometimes as somebody walks down the corridor shouting about and then we, we can't hear any. Okay, committee, now we're back in place. Thank you. Thanks for coming back on time. We're going to move straight on to item 5.2. This relates to 322 Oundle Road in Woodston. And please, can I ask Shahida Montgomery to introduce the item when you're ready? Thank you, Chair. My name is Shahida Montgomery. I am the DM officer assigned to this application at 322 Oundle Road. The application is for a retrospect day room and block paving to the backyard at number 30, uh, 322 Oundle Road, Woodston. This shows the application site etched in red. Oundle Road um, to the front and you can see that there, um, the Sugar Way and Valley Park Centre opposite mm -hmm. to the south Southwest is Buttercream Drive, and the application side uh, application site is surrounded by residential dwellings. This is an aerial photograph. Again, please note that there are residential dwellings um, around the southern side of the application site. These photos show a street view of the application site, as you can see from Oundle Road. It is a detached two-story dwelling served with parking to the front. <coughs> this is a street view again taken from Oundle Road. And you can see that between the two properties, you are able to see some of the outbuildings which are to the rear of the property within their <coughs> rear garden. The day room in question can also be visible from the street view. These are some of the photos taken just to show, um, to give an idea of the street view before we go into detail. This shows the entrance to Buttercream Drive looking westward down Oundle Road. These are the block, pa block plans provided. To the left hand side is the block plan showing the site. B uh, prior to the erection of the day room. The site is already served by a rear extension as well as a day room which is sited towards the rear boundary. On the right hand side, this is the proposed block plan which shows the siting of the day room which is the subject of this application. These are the floor plans, floor plan and the elevations as submitted. The day room is 6.1 meter by four meters. As you can see from the elevations, the day room is also served by a large overhanging canopy, which is 1.6 meters depth. The height to the eaves is 2.8 meters and the total height to the apex of the roof is 4.5 meters. As this is a retrospective application, these photos show the day room is built on site. This photo shows the application the host dwelling in the background with the, um, with the day room and behind it you can see number 320 Oundle Road as well as part of the rear garden of the application site. This is a photo of the, the day room. In the background you can see the existing day room that is towards the rear boundary of the application site. The buildings to the left-hand side behind the day room is 318B Oundle Road. Just to give members and attendees an overview of the, the, the history, the planning history of the site, 
This same scheme for a retrospective day room was refused in February for two reasons. Officers at the time felt that the excessive scale and design was out of character considering the site and its con the context, as well as the impact to neighbors. Previous to this, a proposed application for a storage shed of similar footprint was approved in 2021. This proposed scheme was for a storage shed which would have a footprint of six meter by four meters and eave hi eaves height of 2.5 meters and total height to roof apex of 3.7 meters. It consisted of two timber doors to the front elevation and a single window to the north elevation facing the host dwelling and did not have the canopy that you see here in the as built development you see before us. Officers also acknowledge that they, this application for a storage shed is extant and this existing day room has been built in breach of that previous application. This is a street view taken from Buttercream Drive. You would be able to see the, the day room is built above the fence line and the, the rear boundaries of the properties. Number one Buttercream Drive has an existing garage which you can see the, um, the gable end just to the right of the day room. And number 324 Ando, Ro Ando Road has a rear garden which abuts the application site. This is a photo taken from the front driveway and the front garden of number 318B Ando Road. One of the reasons for recommending this application for refusal is impact to neighbor resulting from the increase in height of the, uh, the is built day room as you can see here. It is our view that the increased roof height as well as the changes to the windows um, and doors results in perception of overbe overbearing and re uh, res restriction in outlook to um, the, the occupants of this property. This photo is taken from the garden space of number one Buttercream Drive. Whilst not of the same level as 318B Angel Road, it is officer's view that there is an increased impact on the amenity to the occupants of this adjacent dwelling as well from the increased height and design of the day room as built. This is a photo taken from the garden of 320 Andal Road. I shall go over the site history in relation to the developments that you can see in this photograph. The application site that you can see, the, um, the white building to the right hand side, the horse dwelling, but has already benefited from a rear extension granted in 2019, which abuts the horse dwelling. You can then see next to it the container which is um, installed in the garden of 320 Andal Road. As you can see from the photograph, this is of a lower height and a smaller scale to the, um, to the outbuildings that you <coughs> see within the application site. Then to the left of the container, you see the, the day room is built. The first application in 2020 
at this location was for a detached storage shed, which was approved for a similar footprint, but of lower height and without the canopy. In 2021, a retrospective application was, um, was received, which was, re uh, which was refused for the same reasons that officers have recommended for this current application. This current application is of a same of, of is the same proposal as that which was refused previously. You can just see um, next to 318B Oundle Road the roof of the existing day room, which is to the rear of the application site, um, just below the roof line of number one buttercream drive. This is, again, a photograph taken from 320 Oundle Road, just for a better comparison of the existing dwellings in relation to the outbuilding in question. For visual reference, we have provided the floor plans here of the previously approved storage shed on the left-hand side which was for six meter by four meter footprint. However, this was served by two doors to the front and one window facing the horse dwelling. On the right hand side, you see the current floor plan of the day room, which is of a similar footprint, we acknowledge, 6.1 meters by four meters. However, there is an additional window to the south elevation serving a, uh, serving a toilet, as well as a door and window to the front elevation, which are different to that which was approved. The window to the south elevation has now been changed to a, a door. These elevations compare the approved elevations for the storage shed on the left-hand side, as well as the increase in height that you see on the right-hand side for the current elevations. There is a canopy which is 1.6 meter depth. The eaves height is now of 2.8 meters and a total height of 4.5 meters to the apex. I shall go over the main changes from the um, previous approved application within these photos. So the increase in the height, 3.7 meters previously to the apex and now it's 4.5 meters as you can see here and the, the photos of the change in fenestration, which we note also um, is a change in the use. In conclusion, sorry, um, going, sorry, one more, point of interest which I forgot to note here is in this photograph we have put just for a uh, visual reference a blue dotted line sorry excuse me there we go which marks out a four meter height this was approved for the rear extension and gives you a visual comparison the roof height of 3.7 meters approved for the shed would have fallen a little way below this line. And you can see the difference in height of the day room in comparison to the rear extension and how this can exacerbate the adverse impact to neighbor, neighboring occupants. In conclusion, members are reminded that the retrospective day room has been built in breach of an extant planning approval for a shed which whilst of similar footprint to the current scheme, 
Officers at the time noted it to be somewhat large for a shed, but felt that the overall scale, height, and design were acceptable on balance. The incremental deviations from those approved plans result in cumulative harm of a level which is considered unacceptable. In addition, an application for this current scheme has also been refused recently for the re same reasons as discussed. Officers are of the view that there are no material changes from the previous refusal and therefore, for this reason, are recommending the current scheme for refusal as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McDonnell. Could I call Andy Coles, please, Councillor Andy Coles, to the front? Chair, can I just ask a procedural question before you? Uh, yes, you can. Um, I see the matter has been referred to committee by Councillor Yogatin, who's a councillor in Dogsthorpe. Are, are councillors permitted to refer planning applications outside their wards to committee? Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for consideration. Yeah. Um, if I just come in quickly, if you wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind reminding everybody, and it, hopefully it'll go further afield, that to come with planning reasons and not come because you don't like it or you do like it. Because that doesn't help and it, it wastes a lot of time when we deliberate <coughs> things that are there's no real reason to. So, yes, you can. Um, it is your right to do that, but for planning reasons. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Coles, welcome. Um, you'll have 10 minutes when you're ready to address committee. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, committee, for um, having the time today to, to hear what I have to say. I'm, I'm speaking in support of the Council's position to refuse this retrospective planning application um, at 322 Arundel Road. Uh, I first heard of the issues in May when Mr. Branston, who, who is obviously involved in this, phoned me up and asked me if I would support this. Um, and I therefore thought it would be prudent to go and speak to all the residents nearby and find out how they were feeling about this. Um, and what came up time and time again was this issue of um, overbearing size of the building, that the neighbourhood immunity under LP17 was, was substantial. I've had a look at the, the property from all the angles. You've seen, you've seen the photographs. I've walked around. Um, it's very clear that this is way beyond what was expected. And if you just look at the, the history of the application, uh, there was an application to build this, which was refused, quite rightly. The application then came in to put in a, a brick shed, which replaced the old wooden shed. And, and thoughtfully, I think the, the applicant has produced these pictures. I don't know if you've seen those in the additional pack, which shows what was there before. So a, a wooden shed there and a, a bit of a the garden's a bit of a state. That's been improved somewhat, but you do then see how much larger the impact of this particular building is. It's the, it's the roof elevation, and, and if you can, it, there's slightly different perspectives here, but the size of the wooden shed is roughly the same as the, as the footprint of the, of the new brick built building, but clearly that overhang you see, which is one and a half meters wider, produces a much larger roof a much greater impact for people who live around it. And I've been to every garden around there. I've spoken to the residents, and, and they think that it is an overbearing structure and it shouldn't be allowed. I could go on, but I appreciate it's a busy day, and that's probably all that I need to say, but um, I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Coles. Uh, can we see have any questions, please? Oh, Councillor Jamil. Yeah. I, I understand that you've spoken to all the people who live in around there, but I'm looking at there were six people who were consulted and only two objected. Um, they would have had an opportunity to object, but they've not done that. Any particular reason? That's correct. The, the majority of the people living there are, are renters and didn't feel that they wanted to, to object because there might have been an issue for them. Um, but they did say that um, they, were, they had this issue with it and were happy for me to represent their views. Okay, no further questions for Councillor Coles. Thank you very much, Councillor Coles. Thank you. <coughs> okay. We'll call now Councillor Imitaz Ali, please, to the front. Members will note a slight change because obviously uh, uh, Councillor Ali is not here representing his ward, but himself as an objector. Councillor Ali, welcome to your first one. We'll try and be good to you. Um, you have five minutes when you're ready to address committee. Yeah, this is quite intimidating actually talking to a, 
a long table with councillors and officers on both sides. Uh, but thank you. Um, yeah, lots of mentions of the word day room from Mrs. Montgomery. Day room, day room, day room, because there's an existing day room and they've now retrospectively applied for a, a second day room because they just can't get away with the, with the fact that this is a shed. Anybody's idea of a shed is a wooden structure. Fair play, you can go single skin walls and have a brick based building. That's a shed, but that's, you know, double cavity with, with insulation in there and plans for a, a shower toilet. It looks like much more than a shed. Um, Councillor Heller, you mentioned in the, in the previous application that you sometimes appreciate refer to committee on some applications because even though you might be supportive, it gives an opportunity of debate. I don't think this particular reference to committee falls into that category. Um, I think this one's, it's, it's, it's highly contentious. I think the reasons for rejection are, are, are solid, they're sound, and the reapplication doesn't necessarily deal with any of the issues. Um, just looking at the picture on the screen there, um, I'm, uh, I'm basically the house just on the left, the White House just on the left. It was a picture of my golf net, and I used to imagine hitting those drives way off into the sky, and now I can just see them hitting this, this brick-built wall right in front of my face while I'm in my front garden. Uh, the day room in the back of the site, that's completely closed off any views in my kitchen, but that's approved, I understand this. Uh, we sit there for breakfast and we used to see our garden fence and sky. Now we see our garden fence and a brick wall. But again, that's not up for dispute here. The, the outbuilding that they've applied for currently, that one can be seen from my living room, from my dining room, from three of my bedrooms and from my front garden. So there's significant uh, impact on, on our amenity. Um, and then just, just response to, I know it was a question for Councillor Coles, but Jamil's question around, you know, six people were asked to consult on this and two responded. That's a 33% response. I think we got a 0.1% response on an all out election in Peterborough. So 33% is ridiculously high. It's higher than the, uh, the, the average turnout on elections in Flair and Woodston. So, that's all I've got today. I'm happy to take any questions as a, as a, in my capacity as a resident. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Ali. Uh, any questions at all from members? Councillor Jones. Um, Councillor Ali, just, um, you know, we're not disputing the, the, um, the one that was approved, but was that what you anticipated seeing? It was approved, but it doesn't appear that what was approved is, is actually what is there. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard this many times in this committee, but as a neighbour, you want to be good with your neighbours. It's very, very awkward for me to be sitting here representing my views as a resident, knowing that my neighbours and potential voters are just sat right behind me. It's an awkward position to be in. So when the initial application went in, I thought the planning department will do what they need to do. If they're allowed to build and the planning department feel that they're not infringing on my amenity sufficiently and they approve it, then I'll hold my hands up and say, you know what, fair play, well done, and you've got this additional floor space. But it's the increment, I think Mrs. Montgomery mentioned this as well, the incremental development on this site. So they've got a pretty much, um, what is it? Uh, a 42 odd square meter extension to a uh, better to their house that almost doubles their footprint just of the house. Then they've got a, um, uh, sorry, the 42 square meter is, is the day room. That's pretty much, um, the size of a house, and that's what they've got at the back of their site. And then with this one, even though it was approved as a shed, it's when the planning officers have, have declined this and they've gone back and reapplied, and now they've done a retrospective that I feel like as a resident, I feel like I should, shouldn't just rely on you guys and, and the planning committee, I should actually speak about you know, my, my rights as well as a, as a resident. Any other questions at all? Councillor Hogg. So just to kind of summarise, I suppose, um, what you're saying is that the, um, the the approved day room is not something that you would have chosen for um, for the property, but you, in the um, to, to make sure that there was you know good neighbourly um, conduct and, 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 and relations, as it were, um, you're happy to. But th this is kind of a, a bridge from too far, so to speak. That they've that they've now this this exists this secondary. Uh, day room is is just too much for you to to feel like you know that you know enough is enough basically. Is that kind of sum up your feelings on this? Yeah, kind of. I, 
the, the, the existing day room at the back of the site, it's not even up for question here. It is what it is and it's already there. So this is the application of a second day room after they've had a 42 odd square meter day room approved, completed, ready, and uh, what looks like a 25 square meter um, extension to their existing house. So, so they've already more than doubled their footprint and they're now looking for an additional 24 odd square meters for another day room. Um, and that's that's where you gotta yeah you gotta rely on common sense of, of the committee to, to reject that. Thank you, Councillor Hiller. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've withdrawn the uh, the question. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for Councillor Alley? No. Thank you very much for your time to return to the public gallery. Chair, could I just make one observation? Uh, this was referred to planning committee without any consultation, as far as I understand, with ward uh, councillors. Is there something in planning committee where you could have just a checkbox to say ward councillors were consulted if a non-ward representing councillor were to refer to committee? Might be one for you guys to consider at a later date. I will ask the question for you right now, but as far as I know, the report is sent to ward councillors, is it not? So, so they would have had it before the, we got here. The report was absolutely sent, but the, ref, the referral to the committee was by a non-ward councillor, mm -hmm. and that ward councillor didn't contact myself, Councillor Coles or Councillor Dowson, as far as I'm aware. So maybe that should just be a checkbox, or not. I was just a suggestion. I think that's more. that would probably go down the Constitution rather than just something that planning could do. So but perhaps I, as a chair, I could write to leaders to remind all councillors that probably out of courtesy, mm -hmm. yeah. if they're going to call something in somebody else's ward, they tell them. Yeah. Just, just common courtesy, I would have thought. Um, you know, there's a danger of political call-ins and all that, and we don't want to get down that line, obviously. Right. But yeah, I'll take it on board. Councillor Hiller. That ex actually was going to be my question, and uh, I withdrew it because I thought maybe I'd have a word with you afterwards about that. I take it you are the ward councillor for, for this area. So um, d <laughs> my question was, and I think you've answered it now, why didn't you refer this rather than somebody from out of the ward, out of the area, leaving it to them to refer? That you weren't aware of of this coming to committee, or or, or how do you? Judge this the this particular case has been referred to referred to committee because it's likely to be refused, and they were hoping for discussion for it to be passed. If if anybody asked me to refer this to committee, I would say absolutely not, because I completely back the officers on this. It's just. Were you given that option? I mean, were you aware of it and made that conscious decision not to refer it? I was asked to refer. I refused to. Councillor Coles was asked to refer. I think he refused to. Councillor Dowson was asked to refer. I think he refused to. I, I, I understand just, completely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Fine. Thank you, Councillor. If you like, that's it. Okay. Uh, now I call Mr. Akhtar, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and M Mr. Actor, before you start, just so you know, um, obviously you're registered to speak. Uh, uh, is this your daughter or your friend? Yeah, she's or? my daughter. Right. Are you, are you registered to speak? I assume you, you are. Mm -hmm. now, I've only got one name here. Uh, she's my daughter, and I think more like you. I'm speaking on behalf of them. Um, hold on just a second. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, could I ask what your name is? Mine, here, Jeff. Yeah. Your, okay. Uh, committee, are you content that we have somebody else to speak as well on behalf? We've got two, but are you happy for both of them to speak because it's on the same? I have to ask your permission. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So it's just, I presume only one is registered and I obviously do have to change that. I have to ask committee's mm -hmm. permission. So you're happy now if you speak. Yes, council. Holmes. I presume that the, the allotted time would then be split between the yes, two. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll announce that. Okay. Welcome to committee. You will have five minutes between you. Yeah, not each, um, to address committee when you're ready. The time will start as soon as you start to speak. Thank mm -hmm. you. The previously approved building was for a shed. The building that has, has been built is of a greater standard of construction, giving a superior appearance and quality to, to the rear yard. <coughs> Unfortunately, it has been built slightly taller than the shed and with a front canopy. 
I asked if the original application had been for increased size, would it have been re refused? I do not agree that a small increase in roof height results in, 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 in unacceptable overbearing. In appearance issues, I draw your attention to the container and shed position adjacent to the boundary on the property of 320 Arundel Road. If overbearing is an issue, please note the position of the structure in the garden of 324 Arundel Road, which is very high, which is very high and overbearing. Note also the two houses built on the next property, 318 and 320 Arundel Road. It does not seem fair the neighbors of 322 Arundel Road can construct two large garages on the direct boundary to number 322 and the adjoining 320 can build two houses in the back garden. But um, my dad is penalised for building a better but like slightly taller building than approved. Additional drainage has now been upgraded and installed. Slot drains installed crossing the site. The overall rear area of 322 Arundel Road is a great improvement on the previous unkempt and, neg and neglect neglected area. The structure is of no detriment to the area but is of great improvement and considering what the neighbours have done on both sides, sides of the site. To refuse on the basis of a small increase in roof height would, be gro would appear grossly unfair. Thank you and I hope you'll be able to approve the application. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? Councillor Hiller, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, it was a very good address, so uh, thank you very much. I found that very informative. Um, you, you did say that you, you felt it was unfortunate that it had been built nearly a metre higher than it should have been. Uh, was it also unfortunate that you built a 1.6 metre canopy? Uh, was that unfortunate? And, and can you tell me why it was unfortunate, thank you, rather than deliberate? Because actually is the like you know from builder side like you know I'm not builder like you know I give the everything to the builder like you know, and uh, my neighbor he knows like you know about everything, and we try our best like you know I don't know about the height wise if I, if like you know little height like you know if I no problem then I do the like you know more like you know down, and uh, only this is not mistake from my side is only from builders like. So when your builder built it nearly a metre higher and they put a canopy on that wasn't being allowed, um, wasn't in the original application, you, you didn't add a word with your builder and ask be, him why, why, why he's building a canopy. Uh, because it is not a fact to anybody. It's a middle of like, you know, in, in my side. And nothing to do like, you know, on the neighbour effect. Because neighbours are too far, like, you know, my, my both like rear. One side is like in four bedroom, other side like it's three bedroom. And uh, I personally, I don't any factor like, you know, my next door neighbors. Councillor Hogg. Uh, just, just to kind of <laughs> push a little bit harder on this, this, this height difference. It's a 21% increase in height compared to that that was approved. Presumably your builder showed you some plans to say that this is what they were going to be building and, and that uh, this was going to be the cost of, of building the, the, uh, the, the building. Um, uh, surely at that point, you must have realised that, you know, this was substantially bigger than what you had planning permission for. Uh, why didn't you uh, put in a, a new application uh, to get this, this building approved in the correct way before starting to build? Uh, because I am not, I didn't, didn't know about like, you know, is the height is too much up. Because I, I do proper, like, you know, roof person is a company in the whole beach, like, you know. I call them, engineer came, he designed everything, like, you know, the roof. And uh, I don't know about uh, the height is too much. If I know the, like, you know, it's a problem for me, why I do, like, you know. And uh, after somebody, I, my next door, I think, complained, and uh, council, like, you know, people came, and they checked the height. And uh, personally, like, you know, it's not my mistake, only everything from the builder side. And uh, I, I make the building nice and uh, like, you know, good whatever I can. Okay, Councillor Jones, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, okay, your builder has inadvertently built it a, a, a metre higher, okay? That's mm. what I should be telling me. Can you please tell me what you've got planned on that space between the, the day room and the back of the house, because that looks to me like foundations for another building. Is that 
going to be unfortunately developed? No, no, it's just like, you know, black pill now. It's what, sorry? Black, uh, brick uh, paving like, you know, I, may, I, I put all the like uh, in the driveway, brick paving. It, 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 but if I may, Chair. Well, you sort of may, but it doesn't really apply to this, this thing. Sorry? So I, just, I just need you to be careful with your question because what could be is not what we're, about, we're looking at. Okay, oh, let, let, me ask, let me ask the question, uh, why mm. is it not being block paved the same as the rest? Because, you know, if you see very, like, you know, mud and, uh, like, very, like, you know, and I, I, I make it clean, like, you know, if you, see, if you compare both sides, like, you know, black being nice and other previous old one, I can't, like, park my car inside, mud, like, you know, and even my children, they can't play. If you see in this situation, no, my children, I got three children, they can't play, like, they can't even go, go in the garden. That's why I make like, you know, black paving and make it better for living. Okay. You understand where I'm coming from, can I? Yeah. Councilor Bush, please. Thank you, Chair. You said that, that you don't think this should be refused because of the height. Yeah. So why was doors, different doors put in, different windows put in, and the Hoverang built it? which wasn't to the original planning application. And uh, be honest, like, you know, I don't know, but is that if I make the door on that side, there's any effect, like, you know, I think these are, uh, make it for, put my stuff there, like, you know, and now after, like, I make my, change my mind for, like, my baby, baby playroom, like, you know, for this one. I, and uh, console people, they've been there, all the stuff in there. And it's just for personal use for children, like playroom. And uh, that's why, like, you know, I, I make the door on one on that side. This is all for, like, my personal use. Nothing for, like, you know, because I, I got big family, my children, like, you know, that's why I, I built, like, you know. Yeah, it's all right saying it's, it's for your children to play in. Yeah. But you shouldn't go away from the planning application you put in. You shouldn't just go ahead and build what you want to build. Could you tell me why? And uh, I didn't know about I, I didn't know about the like you know this problem for me later like you know, if I knows like you know I can do the planning permission before because I'm just normal person I don't know about like inside. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Simons. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, my biggest concern is you applied for the day room, yeah. it was refused, mm. but you still built it. No, no, it's all, you know, this building is already, already built like uh, the council gives the planning permission is permitted be before. And I, I just, my height is, uh, height is problem. I think I'm correct in saying you applied for a, a day room, it was refused, but you've still built it. I, I, if anybody can confirm that, that'd be great. No, it is the other way around. I'm a, uh, Councillor Simon's applied, the, the shed was agreed the original plan and then instead of the shed the day room was built yeah and then retros retrospectively asked for permission which was refused and now we're here again with the same application which officers are saying to refuse or recommend does that is that clear Thank you. okay uh, councillor hall just one question um so in february when it when, when this was refused by officers you brought back in exactly the same state that it was before uh, on refusal. Um, did you make any kind of, um, uh, did you look into being able to amend the building in any shape or form, like removing the, uh, you know, the roof and putting a different roof design on um, so that it, it was, you know, uh, closer to uh, the, the shed so that you know, at least, you know, we'd be seeing something that was different from one that was refused it seems to me that you've decided that you've um you built the the, the shed the, the uh, sorry the day room that you want um officers have said no that that that's not right and and it's refused and you've just decided to come back again with exactly the same 
proposal and have made no kind of attempt to change um, the, the format of, of the design. When the, like, you know, uh, city council, like, you know, people, there are few, I, I speak to my, like, you know, architect, and uh, I explain them, like, you know, council, like, you know, make, makes, like, you know, problem. He came down, and I said, put the new application, whatever, like, you know, their standard. And uh, my, like, you know, architect put, like, new application, like, you know, I don't know how he, he like, you know, he, he done. And uh, I just told him, like, you know, console problem, you make the new application, whatever the standard. And uh, Councillor Jamil. Thank you, Chair, and through you. When your architect did the design of the building, yeah. and then you decided to change the design, did you mm -hmm. speak to your architect? Before the planning commission is for the shed, like, you know, and uh, then, I, I started my work, then I think like, you know, same money like you know, spent for the shed. Why not, why not I make like, you know, for the decent, you know, decent room for like, you know, use for as a, as a playroom. And, uh, Mr. That's not the question I asked. <laughs> I said, when you were granted planning permission, yeah. you submitted a particular drawing, this yeah. is what I'm gonna do. Mm. When you then changed or changed the architect and tell mm. him I'm changing this, so maybe come back some I just like you know I called the, uh, my architect and uh, I told him like you know change whatever they like and put the new application and uh, after like you know he can put the submit I don't know the same one or the other different one what was this change done before you built it or afterwards after Okay, just one quick question for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, your initial uh, plan that was accepted and approved was for a shed. Yeah. Would you agree yes. that this is nothing like a shed and is a lot bigger than a shed? No, yes, sir. Is the, Mr. Chairman, is the same like, you know, like, you know, uh, six meter long and four meter like, you know, the wide. And, uh, is not like bigger or anything like only problem is the height like and uh, all the measurement is uh, like same but, but the initial didn't have a toilet didn't have extra windows because didn't actually, have extra doors so it's a lot yeah. different to a shed because i haven't got a toilet in my shed actually i, I explain i explain like you know my my wife like you know she's athletics like you know patient and uh, she can't walk like up down up down and then I think maybe later I can make like little toilet for like, you know, and if you want, we can provide the like, you know, doctor, like, you know, everything. She can't like, you know, walk too much. Even like only one time she like, she got athletics because weight wise. And if you want, you can, we can provide the like, you know, doctor report or. That's not what the question was. It's not something I have the gift to give you. Um, the reason I'm asking is I just wanted to see that, that you were given permission for one thing and you built something else. Now, the reason you built something else but it, doesn't it, appear to have been given. There's no evidence no, as to is, why you need it. You're given some now, but you yeah. didn't then. So I'm just wondering, all I want from you is, do you accept that it's nothing like what it was before? It's higher, yeah, it's got different windows and it's got a toilet in there. Yeah. The toilet, just like, we didn't make anything over there. We didn't make anything uh, like toilet or any, anything. We just like make the little bowl. And uh, I can, I can, I can give the grant, yeah. guarantee, or I don't like, you know, we didn't make in future. Yeah, but you need to have planning permission to do something like that, and you haven't got it. But is the only, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, only wall there? There's nothing, toilet, no nothing there, no connection, no nothing, everything, no okay. nothing. Okay, fair enough. So you, I'm trying to get to to accept it's not a shed, but okay, fair enough. Uh, any further questions, please? I don't think we need to to push this any. It's not fair. I think um, the gentleman's been interrogated enough yeah. for that. So I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Speaking. Thank you. Could you just turn? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Questions to officers, then, please. Jones. Um, I'd just like to pose my same question perhaps to officers 
on the flooring there is uh, um, what, why is there a marked difference? Did you notice anything on that floor that, uh, you know, is, is what, why is it not being block paved? Yeah. Thank you, through you, Chair. I'm afraid we can only look at the application as submitted, and that is not a question that we are able to answer. So, I, I, I just find that, um, rightly or wrongly, either through um, lack of knowledge or, um, or, or bad advice, um, but essentially this, this, this um, construction has gone ahead quite clearly without um, permission, even though, you know, the, the permission was there for a shed. They, they decided to make changes. Um, rightly or wrongly, uh, and they are substantial changes. There's a you know a 21% increase in the roof height. There's the um, there's the bit that sticks out um, at the front of the building, and, and essentially, from for all intents and purposes, for for people looking at that building from other properties, it, it looks like a, a a building of a much bigger size than than perhaps it actually is. Um, I just find that you know it, this was refused in in uh, in February quite rightly by by officers. There hasn't been any attempt to try and mitigate in some shape or form, um, you know, by tearing down the roof and, and redoing rejigging it so it doesn't have the overhang, uh, that the roof height can be lowered or you know a, a flat roof put in instead. Um, there's there's been no change whatsoever, and I think that as a committee, if we were to uh, approve this um, we would be sending out a very strong message to people that you can essentially put in an application then build what you want and then ask for a, a you know a uh, another application in retrospect and you'll be fine to get to to get what you want um, that's not how it works um, so I think you know we have to be you know we have to think about the neighbors we have to think about the um, the immunity loss to them that you know this is is out of keeping and it is overly um, developed. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm happy to um, to go with the officer's recommendation on this and, and, and um, basically uh, for refusal. Sorry, thank you, Councillor. Oh, Councillor Hither. Yes, thank you, Chair, and through you, I feel slightly embarrassed in front of the members to admit that I have a shed with a toilet in it. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll just, on serious note, of course, um, in, in that. A little bit of a red herring, the space between the main house and, and the, what is now, um, Shed. That's, you know, that's here to decide. But it, yeah. as I said to, to the applicant, um, asked the question. You know, it's been built pretty much a, a, a metre higher than it should have been. It has this canopy uh, effect um, uh, sticking out from the side, 1.6 metres. Its its fenestration has altered. The, you've got doors where there shouldn't be, and X Y Z. It, it, it's almost with this huge extension that Councillor Ali eloquently described, um, with this huge extension that we've got already on the back of the house, we've got what is in effect um, two further almost one bedroom detached houses <laughs> going towards the end of the plot. I think that's a particularly good photograph. Uh, might I also say, um, uh, Chair, I, I thought uh, uh, Mrs Montgomery did a, an excellent uh, job of addressing the committee on this because it's a difficult one in that it's there's all sorts of little bits and pieces to it and I thought that that, that address was very easily understood so, so I thank you for that. Um, I don't see how we can approve this chair frankly I, I just think our officers have got it right um, for all the right reasons uh, policy based reasons it, it shouldn't be approved um, it, it is not what should be there I thought Councillor Coles 
in his address. Um, he talked to the um, neighbours. He went round and actually spoke to the neighbours. I completely get that, you know, six um, inquiries almost and only two respond. Well, we know the reason for that. It's, it's, it's easy to, uh, to, to not respond, isn't it? And so I completely accept what he said on that and, and indeed Councillor Rowley. So those are my thoughts, Jay. I, I, I will be um, uh, voting with uh, the councillors, um, sorry, the councillors, the, the officers' recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will stretch the bones of credulity to breaking point and say Mr. Ektar is not a builder and he perhaps uh, wasn't aware of the height. Um, I don't think there's much mitigation for the rest of that development and having been refused before and it coming back retrospectively, I would have concerns if this were passed for approval. And once again, along with my fellow councillors and indeed the people who've spoken to, to today against the application, I will in fact be going with Office of Recommendations. Councillor Jamil. Thank you. If you look at the site itself, it is actually a mishmash. You know, houses being at the end of gardens and you know, trailers going off. I, I looked at that and I, I then thought, well, if you consider this, um, and if it got approval, then I wouldn't have an issue with it. But the problem here is that we're here again after it's been refused, but the building has already been built without approval. Now, it's what Councillor Hogg was saying. <laughs> we, we'd be, I think, meeting every day if we let stuff like this go. So for me, as process has not been followed and things that got, you know, that what, what was given permission for and what we ended up with, we, we can't send that message out. Otherwise, we, we would, you know, as planning committee would be probably meeting and planning officers would be overwhelmed. And for me, I, I just find that, you know, if because they've not followed process, I'm going to go with officer approval, I mean, a refusal. Sorry, Councillor Rush. Can I just ask the planning officer a question? This was refused. Would the agent be contacted about it being different to what was approved in the first place? It's a bit late. It's a bit late. Is it? I just thought. No, I just thought about it. We've moved through questions. Right, right, I'll, I'll, but if it, if it helps your debate, then no, I'll I just wondered whether the process, because I can understand, you know, the applicant probably, as Councillor Jamil said, doesn't understand the planning process sometimes. Can I, can I just come in? I'm sure yep. officers will come in on that, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, retrospective planning is something that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, because people can build stuff and then go for planning afterwards. That we, we have no, and neither do officers, can't refuse because you built it before you asked. This case is it's not according to what was given permission, and it was refused, and it's come again, referred by a ward council, not a ward council, a councillor for us to determine. So from a point of view of retrospective, there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine within planning rules. You can build what you like. It's your risk though, okay? Uh, as to whether you'll get permission. Is that okay? Yep. Councillor Sharp. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, and I had a slightly different approach, although I'm broadly in agreement with a lot of the comments that we made, a slightly different approach, and it was picking up on something you just said, Chair, that yes, it may be a retrospective planning application, and for me, the whys and wherefores of why what has been built is and built to plan are to one side. What we're trying to consider here is the reasons for a refusal, and other reasons for a refusal are still valid, and I've heard nothing in the from the presentations um, from those making representation or in the debate to, to say that it isn't unduly bearing, overbearing, and it isn't unduly dominant. So I, on that basis, I think the <coughs> grounds for refusal the officers made are factual. There's no evidence <coughs> to the contrary. So kind of, for me, the rest of the debate about whether it's retrospective, what the reasons for that were, are, are, are partly irrelevant in this case. Well, quite right, retrospective is irrelevant. Exactly. So, so, so having said all that, because of those factual reasons, I've seen no evidence to the contrary for the reasons of refusal, then I, I see no reason why we, 
we cannot do anything else but support the officers. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Um, unless anybody's got to say something, I've got something to say. Disappointed, very disappointed that this has been called in by a councillor who hasn't been able to be here to let us question, which would have been useful. I think anybody who calls something in either ideally attends so as committee can have a chance to talk and um, cross-examine, if that's the right word, or at least have a report within the report as to why they feel it's a good or a bad thing. I also would like to get it out there to remind people that um, it's not for planning officers to decide the reasons for why you're calling it in. They may help, but you should have, or councillors should have their own reasons under pl planning reasons and seek officers' help maybe to put that together. It would be wrong for somebody to go, I don't like it, planning officers give me a reason. That's not the way it's done. It's the other way around, okay? Um, so I am disappointed in councillor Jürgen team for not being here but, and not having a report. She called it in, fine, but I can't question why. Not really, and neither can you. So I would like to get that out as well in future. If you're going to call it in, in whoever's ward it is, that you're prepared to attend or at least give committee a written report as to why you want us to look at it. Going on with the rest of it, you're quite right, Councillor Sharp. It's retrospective. Nothing wrong with that, apart from the fact that it's not been approved. So then it's called in for no real clear reason, and it's up to us now to decide which way you want to go. Now, from my point of view, there is no question. Nothing changes. It's still, and I'll quote, out of scale and design, out of character, and that's too much impact on the neighbours. And I don't think there's any change in that, so I will certainly be voting against this application. Anybody else? Can I get a proposal from anybody at this point? Councillor Sharp, I'll go with you, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to propose that uh, we support the officer's decision to refuse this federal planning application for the recommendations set out in R1 and R2 of the report. Yeah, clear? Very clear. Uh, seconder, please. Councillor Hogg. Okay, so we have a proposal and we have a seconder. So we'll go to the vote. All those in favour of the proposal? And that's, I won't go to the um, um, against and abstention because there isn't any because that's a unanimous decision. So the application is, is uh, denied, rejected, or can't, refused. I can't get the word out. Application is refused. Thank you very much, everybody. Again, just bear with us one minute while we uh, just change office slides. This could be quite a, um, a long one, the next one. So would you like the f another five minutes now? Oh, I'm going to give you ten. Oh, eight. I'm going to give you till quarter two. So please don't forget you're in live session. Yet, so please don't discuss the next one, next case with anybody until after the meeting. Thank you.
Okay, could I, um, could I bring these into order again and please ask somebody to shut the door for me, please? Okay, uh, members, the next item is item 5.3 and relates to One Thorpe Avenue. It relates to One Thorpe Avenue in Peterborough. Uh, please can I ask Phil Moore to introduce the item when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Phil Moore. I'm a Development Management Team Leader here at Peterborough City Council, and I'm going to be presenting this application to you now on behalf of the case officer, Karen Ip. So before I actually start the presentation, just a couple of late updates. Um, so firstly, the Conservation Officer has uh, submitted some updated comments just to clarify that he does Error. He hadn't said that in his original comments, but he has clarified that now. Second item is the agent has contacted us and asked us to point out uh, what they consider to be a mistake in the report. And this is on page seven, and quoting from the report, it says, the statement incorrectly claims that policy LP20 does not apply to this application, arguing that it applies to new dwellings rather than extensions. Um, they are correct that there is a typo there what it should say is the statement incorrectly claims that criteria c of policy lp20 does not apply to this application <laughs> so um this application then um one thorpe avenue peterborough the proposal is for extensions and alterations to a dwelling and these include substantial two-story front and side extensions a single story side extension and various alterations to the roof, including an increase in height of the roof. Uh, by way of background, this application is identical to a recently refused application, with one exception, that the, the balconies on the front elevation have been pulled back by 600 uh, millimetres. Key issues to consider with this application are firstly, the impact on the character of the area, including the setting of the conservation area, and the special character area within which it sits. And secondly, the impact on neighbours' amenities. So this is the site location plan. Um, what we have is, if you can see my cursor, oh, you can't see it, can you? Um, the, the, the application site is on a corner plot, corner of Thorpe Road and Thorpe Avenue. And within that plot sits an existing five-bedroom dwelling, which has already been extended uh, within this large plot, which is just over 0.2 of a hectare in area. And as you can see from, from the plan, it's a fairly low-density area, large plots, fairly large dwellings sitting within these plots, well-spaced out. And this is an aerial image taken from Google. And the, you can't see my cursor, so I'll describe where it is. It's the, the plot that's got a sort of turquoisey roof. You can see the character of the area, area fairly well illustrated from that image. Lots of trees, large houses in large plots. Well spaced out. So this image shows the site in its wider context. So the blue star is the site. The blue shaded area is a special, designated as a special character area. Uh, this is covered by policy LP20 in the local plan. And it's described in the local plan as, and I quote, it's des these are designated to acknowledge their strong landscape character architectural quality and development patterns which together provide high architectural quality unquote and uh, the policy requires that new development within these special character areas uh, is expected to maintain the character of, of the area the brown shaded area is Longthorpe conservation area a large part of it which includes uh, the park and gardens of Thorpe Hall which are registered grade two star park and gardens 
Dort Paul itself is grade one listed. Now this slide is the slightly more detailed zoomed in site context plan. Again, the site marked by the blue star, the special character area in light blue. The grade two, it's actually grade two star rather than grade two, registered park and garden in green. The brown line with sort of flags on it that looks a bit like a weather front, that's the boundary of the conservation area, which isn't almost coincides with the boundary of the registered park and garden, but not quite. Also, you'll see grade one listed Thorpe Hall itself and a number of protected trees marked by the, the green circles. And again, from that plan, you can see the low density, well spaced out character of the special character area. Also, um, to be noted from this, there are views from within Thorpe Park, Thorpe Hall Parklands towards the application site. Not everywhere within those parklands. There, are, there is a degree of tree screening, but there are nonetheless views from within that park. This slide shows photographs of the site as existing. Excuse me a second. <coughs> Apologies for that. So th this clearly illustrates the, the house, the existing house and its, its grounds. Now the house was built in the 1940s and uh, we consider it to contribute positively to the character of the special character area. Um, it's not, you wouldn't call it an outstanding dwelling of great architectural merit, but it, in the context of this special character area, it does contribute positively. The bottom photograph is looking from the upper floor window, looking south across the gardens towards the parklands of Thorpe Hall. And you'll note there's an ash tree in the garden that is proposed to go as part of this application. However, it already has consent to, for removal, a separate consent because it's, it's diseased. It has ash dieback. Next set of photos, this is looking from Thorpe Avenue southwards or southeast, showing the existing house in its context. And as you can see, it's a sort of leafy, very leafy context. This is looking north from Thorpe Road towards the existing house. And these photos show views from the Thorpe Hall parkland. And as is described in the report, you can see the, the upper halves of some of the dwellings along Thorpe Road, including the uh, dwelling which is the subject of this application. If you stand in that parkland, apart from the traffic noise and the very limited views of the houses along Thorpe Road, it is virtually unspoiled parkland, hence why it's grade two star. So this, onto the proposal itself. So this slide shows the block plan as existing and as proposed, as existing on the left. It's already a fairly substantial house in itself. The picture on the right shows as proposed, and as you can see, it's a, it's a very, very, very large increase in the footprint of the dwelling. The, the footprint would be increased from 154 square meters to 353 square meters. That's an increase of 200 square meters, which is, uh, quite a bit more than, than doubled. Floor space has increased from 281 to 664 square meters. That's an increase of 382 square meters. In terms of height, 
existing height is 8.11 meters and that will be increased to 9.73 meters that's an increase of 1.62 meters in overall height so these are the existing elevations um, again it's noted on there the the height of 8.11 meters proposed elevations once again it shows the increase in height by 1.62 meters uh, the design of the property is sort of contemporary modern um, with some traditional vernacular features such as gable ends pitched roof uh, lots of glazing uh, a mixture of render uh, and uh, I think timber cladding exterior materials these are the existing floor plans as you can see already fairly substantial dwelling the roof plan shown on there as well proposed floor plans and roof plan there's a flat roof element to it as well Uh, the applicant has submitted with their package uh, a number of CGI images and to some extent uh, these they're not completely accurate the, the the trees shown on the two photographs on the left or the two images on the left the tree trees shown along the boundary are not there at the moment there's a line of dying Leylandii uh, covered in ivy uh, as opposed to the uh, fairly mature deciduous trees that appear to be shown on there it's also not clear whether or not the balconies on these images are the same as what's on the plans i.e. set back 600 millimeters and uh, just to clarify as well w w officers we're not saying that the design of this house is offensive in any way in itself or it wouldn't be appropriate in another context it's it's the context and relationship with the surrounding dwellings and the character of the special conservation area which are the key factors here here are some more images which were submitted with the previously refused application which is as i said earlier identical other than the setback of the balconies and I think these illustrate fairly well the comparison of the resulting dwelling to the adjacent dwellings you can see clearly the really big difference in scale and height now this next image again is just to illustrate the difference in height between the proposed the dwelling as proposed and the adjacent dwelling on Thorpe Road now these photographs were taken from the next door property 188 Thorpe Road from the rear garden and it's a shame I can't get my cursor on the screen there, but uh, the top left image, you can just about see the turquoise roof of the existing dwelling. Uh, Phil, I don't mind if you just want to point, stand up and point, if it helps, if yeah, it helps yeah. you describe it as you go down, just in case. So I'm just going to point out the rough extent of the roof line of the dwelling as, as it would be if it was extended. there and that's just to illustrate what we consider to be an overbearing impact on the residential amenities of the, the occupiers of that property um, also to illustrate the impact it would have on the character of the special character area from from different viewpoints other than the street so it would change what is at the moment a sort of leafy backdrop to a, a roofscape.
Now these are, some, these are some images taken from inside the windows of that property. Again, just to illustrate the, what the roof line would look like. So it would be extended something like that. So sort of roughly like that. So it would be higher than sort of double the length of that. And then the top left photograph, that's taken from the, the, uh, the bathroom window of the next door property. Now, we consider that the one of the reasons for the previous refusal, i.e. direct <laughs> overlooking from the balcony, to this window has been resolved in the current application. Um, so the members need to consider whether they agree with that or not. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, the officer evaluation is we consider by virtue of the scale and height that it would have an adverse impact on the special character area and to a lesser extent, the setting of the conservation area, contrary to uh, policies LP16 and LP19 and LP20. It would also have an overbearing impact on the residential amenities of the neighbouring property, uh, contrary to policy LP17. So the officer recommendation is to refuse. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Phil. Um, right, we've got three ready to speak I've got here. So, Councillor Robinson, please. One of the ward councillors, if you would come to the front. Thank you. Hello, Councillor Robinson, and welcome to your first uh, committee. Um, you have 10 minutes when you're ready, and when you start speaking, to address the committee and take questions. Thank, thank you. you. So I'm the ward councillor for this proposal, but uh, I'm not the councillor who called it to your attention at committee. Um, I've written down what I want to say because I always speak better than being put on the spot, so please forgive me for reading it. Um, but reading the referral to committee for this decision, I see that this is a kind of a tug between delivering prestige homes under LP9 against the maintenance of a special character area under LP20, and that those are the two things we've, we've really got to weigh up, um, as that's what's been highlighted by the uh, call-in decision paperwork. But I just want to set out, I'm not against people extending their homes or people wanting to seek more space or, or luxuries within their house. I totally see that having somewhere beautiful to live is important, um, but my point today is that we can allow people um, to build, uh, extend um, prestigious homes, but do that in a way that meets all the parts of the local plan. Um, so I'd like to speak up for the value of the special character area, LP20. You know, these locations in Peterborough are chosen for an area, uh, for <laughs> chosen for a reason. I live really close to this area, um, and you'll all know it. And you'll all know it because it is so beautiful. Um, that parkland is very, very special, as has been pointed out by the officers. Now, I appreciate that none of the features on that side of the road are at risk of disappearing. Um, the trees, the building, <coughs> the, the lovely honeystone walls. But I think the homes along uh, Thorpe Road contribute to the whole. And what's at risk here is that a decision could be made that damages that whole, that, that whole look, that whole feel as you come along off the roundabout up Thorpe Road. Um, and I see that's what council, uh, council officers have pointed out. What allows the homes to contribute to this special location isn't about one set style or one set of materials that perhaps is the case in other parts. Um, but the thing that makes it so lovely is the way that the houses sit on those nice big leafy plots and I see that as the common thread um, of all these different properties as there are quite a variety of housing styles and that that's the common thread that needs to be maintained to keep that special character area the properties of that um, and yes our planning rules should allow the delivery of large luxury homes that's what we've signed up to in LP9 
Um, and I don't need persuading that housing options should, of course, cater to all parts of the market. Um, and the planning and conservation officers are clearly not against the desire to alter or extend homes in this area. I see that number 184 got a whole annex added on. Number 290, this is Thorpe Road, sorry, 290 Thorpe Road was extended. Number 222, next to a locally listed building further up the street, was permitted an extension. Number 200 uh, was added to to create a five bed home and the whole look of the front was um, permitted to be changed. And uh, number 146, which is just around the corner, um, that had a considerably chunky extension permitted to add new rooms and a facelift and looks lovely. So I think we can have deluxe homes here but also abide by the special character area. Um, I've heard and read comments from the residents in this area that what means to them is the way that it looks. I think the value to the homes here is surely because of their location. By keeping the special character area, it's what keeps the area beautiful, it's what keeps it prestigious, and it's what keeps it desirable. I think if we allow anything to be built, um, you potentially degrade the prestigious residential area and that won't draw the business leaders and entrepreneurs that I see were mentioned in the calling document um, to live in this area, will it? So, just to finish off, I think if you say today that LP20, the special character area considerations, can be put to one side for a large mass, very tall house, because that's what's prestigious for LP9, then we're almost saying, as long as you go really big on the plots in Thorpe Avenue and Thorpe Road, everything else goes out the window. And that could be quite a dangerous precedent. Um, I think the proposal here is for quite a huge house. I can see the points made by local residents um, and the officers about massing, so close to the next door neighbour, and the overall height of the two storey far exceeds those around it. I mean, no offence to the proposer or the architect, but I see that these concerns make was quite a jarring house in comparison to the other. Um, I think you could extend a house here, grant permission, but with a different plan. You could still extend into a luxury home while still suiting the requirements of the special character area. It can still have two storeys as requested. It can still have six bedrooms. It can still fit in a sauna. But does it have to be this site plan? Does it have to be this design? And very particularly, does it have to be this height? And I don't feel it does. So my preference would be to, of course, see an extended home that creates the luxury people desire, but one that doesn't impact on the special character area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Robinson. Uh, questions, please, from anybody on the committee? You've got a way lighter there. Thank you very much. Return to the public gallery. Okay, we move on then. So the next one that we're going to call is uh, Simon Kelly, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly, and welcome to committee. You'll have five minutes when you're ready to address committee. Good afternoon, Mr Chairman. Good afternoon, members. And many thanks for the opportunity to talk. Um, I'm here on behalf of the two immediate neighbours uh, to this plot, um, numbers 188 Thorpe Road and number 3 Thorpe Avenue, and to urge you to uphold the officer's recommendation to refuse this application. I'll just make three brief points today. Um, the first one. All of the special character areas identified in the 2019 local plan, uh, including this one, were designated, amongst other reasons, for their architectural quality. And that point was emphasized in the officer's presentation earlier on. That's particularly clear from paragraph 6.15.2 of the 2019 local plan. And Councillor Fitzgerald is unfortunately quite wrong to suggest otherwise. Just with reference to that, obviously then LP20 comes into play. And LP20 stresses that alterations should be sympathetic to the original style and of an appropriate scale to maintain their character. And also LP20 subparagraph C, which I'm afraid I think does apply in this case, it's a design policy, um, says that the development must respect the scale, massing, depth, materials, and spacing of established properties. 
in this particular case, the Council's conservation area, sorry, conservation officer has confirmed that this particular SCA has an early to mid 20th century character. And I sent you a letter last Thursday and that showed some plan regret some, um, and shows how this area was actually developed in the 1950s. Number one, Thorpe Avenue is, I think, a very fine example of that 1940s character. Um, it's built of a locally distinctive Stanford brick with unusual blue, green, and glazed tiles. It has a varied roof line and a very attractively detailed frontage to Thorpe Avenue. As a result, it makes a positive contribution to the character of the SCA. The proposal is going to completely destroy that character. Um, it's going to wrap the existing house in an anonymous rendered extension, gray cladding and tiling. Um, in order to accommodate the swimming pool, which I emphasize is a lifestyle choice, it's not a cultural choice. But in order to accommodate the swimming pool on the northern side of the plot, it pushes the rest of the extension 11 meters into the garden on the southern side. As a direct result, it places a first floor bedroom balcony 3.9 meters away from 188's upstairs bathroom window. I, I'll leave it to you to decide, to decide whether the intervisibility issues have been resolved by reducing the balcony by 60 centimeters. But there's still an issue for, the, um, for my clients in 188 using that bathroom of a sense of privacy when you've got somebody's bedroom balcony um, just 3.9 meters away, perhaps in midsummer with an open window. That's a not very comfortable, po comfortable position to be in, or you're sitting on the loo, frankly. Um, and that's just poor design. Um, I'm also just uh, instructed that it'll deprive 188's ground floor bathroom and utility room of about 80 to 90% uh, of its natural light. And in particular, the planting between the two buildings, as it now stretches so much further forward, I have serious doubts whether it's actually going to survive in a 3.9 meter tunnel. Um, by doubling the existing footprint and raising the ridge height to nearly 10 meters, it dwarfs the neighboring houses, which are already relatively large houses, and it will loom over the boundary with 188 Thorpe Road. By any measure, this is a very large, not particularly distingu distinguished modern box, and it's out of character with the mid 20th century character of the area. In an SCA, it's just not good enough. And I would urge you to say to the architects and to the owner, go back and try harder. You can do better because this is a great plot. Um, third point, my clients agree with officers that there is scope to significantly extend the existing dwelling, but this needs to be done in a way which is, and I quote the policy again, sympathetic to the original style of the existing buildings and of an appropriate scale. This development simply isn't in any way. In short, this proposal is just not good enough. Please ask the developer to go away, think again, and come back with something which is better so that in 50 years' time, when somebody else is looking at this plot, another planning committee, they're saying that is a superb piece of 21st century architecture, stroke 20th century architecture. We need to be doing something that's sympathetic to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Bang on time. Uh, members, questions, please, at all. Councillor Heather. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair, and through you. Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly. Um, am I right in thinking that you are a, a planning lawyer? Yes. Thank you. Um, your clarification of policy LP20, paragraph C on design, in, in your professional qualified opinion, that does apply to this extension. Yes, and I'll briefly explain why. Please. The, the policy refers to any new development. Development is defined in the Town and Country Planning Act as either building works or a change of use. Um, and a building in the Town and Country Planning Act is defined as any part of the building. Um, therefore, if you were to take a purely legalistic approach to this, that wording must be, I mean, there's, only, there's no definition in the local plan itself of development. So and the drafters of the local plan are all qualified planners. They, they know the Town and Country Planning Act inside out. They must have that definition, the statutory definition in mind. Therefore, that um, subparagraph C must refer to either the whole building or a part of the building. In addition, the subparagraph is prefaced with the word design. If the drafters of the policy had intended that policy to apply, say, to extensions only, they would have said extensions only. This is a design policy which applies to SCAs 
Then is it in, in addition, I believe, to, I think it's policy LP16, which is the other general design policy in the local plan. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. So just to reiterate that, that, in your professional opinion, would um, apply to both extensions and new build? Yes. Any further questions, Mr. Kelly? Right. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Okay. Uh, Simon Machin, please, the agent. Good afternoon, Mr. Machin. Uh, you're an old hand at this. You know you have five minutes when you're ready to address committee. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for giving me the chance to speak on behalf of Mr. Azam and his family in support of their planning application. Uh, just to be clear, Chairman, this is a proposal to provide a family home. It's not a proposal by a developer, and indeed, many of my clients would look at this half-acre plot with envy and think that they could get two or three houses on it, but that's not what you've got before you today. Just to be clear, Chairman, the house is not a listed building. It's not even included on the council's local list of over 250 heritage assets. Those assets not afforded statutory protection, but considered locally important. So it's not on your list. Neither is the site located within Longthorpe Conservation Area. It therefore has no statutory heritage protection. The house itself could be potentially demolished under a 28 day demolition notice. Your officers appear to be trying to give the level of weight that you would give to a proposal within a conservation area, and that's not what's before you. The Thorpe Road area, together with the village of Wothorpe, were designated as special character areas in your local plan. The primary purpose of that designation was to prevent plot subdivision and to maintain a supply of large homes to support the recognised need for prestige houses within the area. The type of homes that successful business people and entrepreneurs like my client wish to live in. It is these large homes on large plots together with the mature tree canopy which define the character of this area. There is no predominant architectural style here. Indeed, the majority of Thorpe Avenue itself is dominated by what could reasonably be described as 1970s and 1980s manicured suburbia. There are a handful of older properties the character of Thorpe Avenue is certainly not mid-20th century. Chairman, I think much of this case is about fear of change, of wanting to maintain the status quo, versus aspiration, innovation, and recognising the needs of our modern and diverse community. Peterborough is officially a university city where we want our young people to be inspired and to be aspirational. Ask any 16-year-old, would you want to live in the 1940s house on this plot? or would you want to live in the house shown in the CGI images? And I think I know what the answer would be. And if I came before your officers with a proposal to put green tiles on the roofs of houses of my clients, I think they would be very reluctant to accept that. The reasons for refusal, Chairman, to my mind are, are flawed and I'll address them in turn. Firstly, it suggested that the proposal would harm the adjacent Longthorpe conservation area, although I note that Phil has backtracked somewhat on that this afternoon. The site is screened by trees and hedges, both to the site boundary itself and to, and to the boundary of the Thorpe Hall Parkland opposite the site. Mr Falco argues that the extension would be visually dominant from that parkland. I don't agree with him, and I'm sure we'll look at the photographs a little later on again. I can assure you that the existing house and the proposed extensions will not be ready, vi readily visible from the parkland. I myself went out on site again this morning to double check that and I couldn't even see the house itself from most of the vantage points. It's notable that in the case recently refused, the previous application, a scheme almost identical to this, that your conservation officers did not conclude that there would be harm to the conservation area. I can't understand why they do now for what is almost an identical scheme. Turning to residential amenity chairman, your officers raised concern about potential views into the unobscured bathroom window to the adjacent property 188. Although again, they backtracked on that this afternoon and that appears no longer to be a principal reason of concern. And they now appear to be more concerned about the overbearing effect of the proposal. 
This is a substantial house on a large plot, as is 188. My client's extension uh, homes. 30 seconds left. It relies on generic policy in its local plan. Chairman, I'll read briefly a quote from Mr Falco on the previous scheme when he received the amended plans, which is substantially the same as those before you today. I think this is better. It acts to bring some relief and better balance, better balance as the previously very linear, wide and unrelieved elevation. On balance, I feel that we could go with this. We were gobsmacked to get a planning refusal on the previous scheme, having had that from your senior conservation officer. We had been led to believe throughout that we would be receiving an approval. Hence, the application is resubmitted and back before you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Machen. Questions, please? Anybody? Councillor Hiller. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. J just a quick one, um, Mr. Machen. Uh, Mr. Machen, sorry. Um, have you actually been into the rear garden of Mr. and Mrs. Dalton's property in Thorpe Road? Chairman, I have no right to access their property. However, your case officer provided the photographs to me taken from their rear garden. I appreciate that the committee have visited the site, uh, but I'm not able to do that. We have no right of access to it. So that's a no then? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, Chairman, it's a no. And right, a I think it's fair to way. say that, that neighbours are very reluctant to let applicants' agents into their property to basically make a case against them. That would be highly unusual for them to invite them to do that. Yep, thank, thank, thank you for your explanation as to why you haven't been in there, but it might very well be that Mr. and Mrs. Dalton, you will accept, Mr. and Mrs. Dalton may have, think, may have thought that they had indeed a case to show you um, by your access legally into their rear garden. Um, would you accept that? So, no? Chairman, at any point, Mr. and Mrs. Dalton could have asked us to go and look at the property, the, the, the proposals from their garden, and we would have done so. They chose not to invite us in to do that. Um, if, if I might, Chair. You, you, no, no. Um, you opine that um, the primary purpose, I was listening very closely to your address, the primary purpose of LP20, special character areas, is to prevent subdivision of plots. Um, that's not completely accurate, is it? Because we have um, quite a raft of... Uh, paragraphs within that LP20, which um, explain very, very well, I think, to, to the layperson as well as the, an expert like yourself, um, extensions and alterations, design. We've heard from a qualified property lawyer, uh, planning lawyer, sorry, about the design elements of that LP20, which do appertain, in fact, to extensions rather than just subdivisions of plots. Would, would you accept that? Chairman, what I would say is that the previous speaker suggested that those drafting the policies would have had his interpretation of those policies. What we don't have are your local plan officers sat around the table this afternoon to be able to answer that question. The previous speaker may have one view, I may have another view, but we need to ask the person that drafted the policy what the answer to that was, and that person isn't here, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, thank you for that um, eloquent response, but um, the respondent was a planning lawyer, fully qualified planning lawyer, not, not an agent. Chairman, with a great respect, I'm a 35-year chartered planner, a member of the Royal Town Planning Institute. I'm really not sure what relevance that have. You, you have a, a planning lawyer representing two objectors. That's not impartial advice you will appreciate. Sorry, sorry, sorry Councillor, sorry where are we going to go? Sorry, I don't want to, go, I don't want to to and fro on yeah, this. You, you indeed are, are being paid to represent your client right. as well, of course. Thank you. Can we call that quits on that because we, there's other questions? Councillor Hogg. Um, you said uh, as part of your presentation that um, that you took from the uh, Thorpe Hall um, grounds that you couldn't see the property. Um, but, but the property that's proposed here is 20% higher than the existing building uh, and, and something like twice the, the, the size of footprint. So it's a substantial building. It's, it's a, almost commercial in its, in its outlook. Could, could I ask the planning officer to point out the application property? So on this one... 
that's not the property. That's the objector's property. The house, I think, is behind the cedar of Lebanon tree to the right. I, I think, but I can't see from here because the screen's so far away. Which which one is the property? The, that's the confusion. <laughs> okay. Could, could you please go to the photograph looking down the garden? Because I think that will also be helpful. The bottom one. Okay. Yeah, the bottom one. Because that, that's also quite helpful in that it shows what's immediately opposite <coughs> the site, which is a very large cedar of Lebanon tree. So... Whilst there may be some points within the parkland that from very distant views, you might be able to see the extensions to this property, it's certainly not as obvious, and if you can go back to your parkland views, please, have you got one which shows what's to the right of that view? No. Which are the white rendered properties on Thorpe Road, which are the most obvious properties from the parkland itself. So that, that view is curtailed so that it doesn't show what's on the right hand side. Thank you. Can you go back? From the road, where's the road walking down the road? Thank you. Oh, that's, that's from the side, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm just trying to look at something else. So right, you, okay, Council, hold camera. What, so essentially, the, the, we can see the house from, from the parkland, and this, this this uh, extension, I mean, it, 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 it's a doubling of size. It, 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 I think the word extension suggests, you know, something far smaller than, than what is proposed. But your extension is 20% higher than the map roof line that we can see from the park line, from, from the park, um, from that picture. So essentially, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go above that, where there's, the, above the, the roof line, there's a, there's a tree behind, that will be obscured by the new extension. I don't know whether it will or not, because it, it, the, the site slopes towards the road. But if, if I'm... It's 1.6 metres above the, that roof line. If I may, Chairman, the point I was trying to make earlier is that the view that you see at the top and the view below it show a small section of Thorpe Road. If you look at the full section of Thorpe Road from the park to the right of the top photograph, there's a row of houses. That's not shown in the images before you, so it gives a false impression of the wider panoramic view from the park. Yeah, any further what you've done, Councillor Hawke? Yeah. Anybody else? Councillor Jamil. Thank you, Chair. Um, just coming back to this issue with the bathroom and the view. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around what, why, when, when you're designing, if you knew that this was going to be an issue, why it wasn't adjusted or moved back in any particular way. I, I'm thinking, obviously, when, when this was done, you may have realised that their bathroom is there and then this issue would come up. Perhaps if the officer could show the view from the bathroom window again. All I can see out of that window is the hedge. I, I don't think there's any suggestion that there'll be a window looking at that window in overlooking terms. And, and what would, it, it's highly unusual to have an unobscure window so close to a property boundary. If you were approving planning permission for new houses today, you would be requiring obscure glazing on the boundary. And of course, if that hedge weren't there, then my client's principal garden would be directly overlooked from that window. And equally, if the hedge weren't there, I'm sure that Mr. and Mrs. Dalton would put a blind up because you would be able to look from the garden into their window. 
So that would in many ways be worse than what's proposed. Okay. Anybody else? No. Mr. Majin, seriously. I'm being serious with you. Yeah. If you were able to go into the next door's garden, which you can effectively imagine yourself in there, you called it a glimpse. Do you not think, just looking at how the officer pointed out the roof line, that's a bit more than a glim glimpse of a roof? Just, it's only an opinion, really. Chairman, I understand what you're asking, but there are two very different things. The first is, can you see something? The second is, what material harm in planning terms does that cause? So, yes, from parts of the garden, you will be able to see the roof of the extension forward. But that extension forward is actually sat behind the house itself. So if you look at that image at the bottom, the extension will be forward of that and largely obscured by the existing rear extension to Mr. and Mrs. Dalton's home. So if, if they're stood in that position of the top left-hand photograph, they will see some roof. If they're sat on their patio, near that single story extension, they will see nothing. So, you, yes, from parts of the garden you will see it, but does that in itself ma cause material harm? Of course, nobody has a right to a view across anybody else's land. I'm not sure that I, I could ever conclude that being able to see something beyond the boundary at that distance in itself causes material harm to the amenity of the, of the residents of that property. Okay, thank you. Anybody else got any more questions for Mr. Majin at all? No, thank you, Mr. Majin. Thank you very much. You just, uh, Council, can you reach over and, yeah, thank you, because it'll only bleed out. Thank you. Right, okay. Yes. Yes, if you really. Um, well, can we see what, what members come up with asking in case it's yours, and if not, we'll if they haven't covered it, we'll come in with a bit more. Is that all right? Yeah. Because it might, it might well be that they've got questions similar. So, okay. Um, questions then to officers. Councillor Hiller. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, possibly um, Mr Moore is going to um, reiterate his thoughts about the view of this potential extension massing um, from the garden of 188 Thorpe Road. Um, and I'd like him to do that, Chair, if, if you would, Mr Moore. Thank you. So yes, the, the, the photographs here are obviously from the, the garden of, of 188 Thorpe Road. And uh, just to reiterate where the, or the extent of the roof will be in these photographs, I'll just point it out. So there will be an increase in height and a doubling effectively of what's already there. So the extent of that roof will more or less over that area just there which we consider to be um, both detri sorry yeah, yeah so this section here would be effectively doubled and higher as well covering more or less I mean this isn't accurate scientific but more or less that area just there and we consider that to be detrimental both to the character of this, the, the special character area, uh, which um, has been explained um, is all about the landscape and architectural qualities. Um, it's not that, that policy doesn't only define it as viewed from the street. It's the whole character of that area. So we consider that it's detrimental when viewed from of the gardens around it as well it all contributes to an erosion of the character but we also consider that um, it would be an overbearing feature in this context it's things like um, dominance of outlook and overbearing impact 
they, it, it varies depending on the context. So what you might expect in a very high density urban area that might be acceptable there wouldn't be acceptable in a very low density area. So we think that this would, as somebody described earlier, it will be a, a looming presence over um, what is currently an open, verdant area. And we think that's detrimental to the residential amenities of the occupiers of that property. Um, I do have another question for Mr. Moore, if I might, Chair. Um, the views and the discussion around the impact or um, lack of impact of, of the potential extension from Thorpe Hall grounds. Of course, the photographs have been taken in the summertime when the foliage, presumably a, a lot of those trees will lose that foliage in the winter time. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are, Mr. Moore, regarding uh, an enhanced view, um, use the word advisedly, an enhanced view of a potential extension fr from the grounds of Thorpe Hall. Your thoughts on that? So, so firstly, Mr. Machen is right. If you did, if that, you would see other properties, including one which is rendered. Um, and in terms of the trees, some of them are uh, cedars there, which obviously don't lose their leaves. However, the deciduous trees will lose their leaves, obviously, in the winter time, exposing. Um, more of those dwellings to view, from public view from the park, including the host property. I, I, Mr. Machen said that we backtracked. I'm not sure what he meant by that. We haven't backtracked that. Our reasons for refusal in terms of the impact on the conservation area remain consistent with what's in the report. What we're saying is that the dwelling as extended will increase its prominence within views from parkland, or it be a small, it would form very small. Conservation area. And we say that the part is low, less than substantial, at the lower end of less substantial. That's what we've seen in the report. Backtrack. We've said it's a low level. However, in, in applying planning policy, planning uh, local plan policy LP19 requires that um, <coughs> if there's less than substantial harm, it must be balanced against the public benefits. And as per the report, we're saying that there are little or no public benefits to this scheme that outweigh the harm, even though the harm is only a small degree of harm. So therefore, it's contrary to that policy. But that's only one part of the, the reason for refusal in terms of the design massing and scale. The, the more um, the impact on the special character area, I think, <coughs> carries more weight in, in terms of um, the harm that this development would cause. Councillor Hogg. Uh, just on the subject of the other houses um, either side of, of, of this property, um, you're saying that they, they could be viewed, but, but none of them are of, of the height that th this is proposed to be. Is that Would that be fair to say? I, I think that's, that's probably fair to say. Uh, I mean, there are some which are higher than others, obviously. It's not, th they're not all uniform. There are different styles, different, different scales. I think the point is that what you can see as existing will be appear much more prominent and, and taller and obvious in that view than what it is currently. Anybody else? No? Okay, then we're going to move to debate. Who would like to start? Anybody? Councillor Hogg. Uh, so, I, I feel that this uh, th this application that's come before us um, represents um, it, it's you know it's the massing element from, from my point of view. Um, it, this is huge uh, extension. It's a it's a more of a doubling of size, and 
Uh, the, the, the bit that I'm most concerned with is the, the increase in height of 20%. It, 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 it goes really from being what would look like a residential home to, to, to being something of commercial in nature, like a hotel or a, um, an office building of some description. Um, it, it doesn't look, to my mind, to be uh, something that, that is in keeping with the area. Um, it, it is, it, it's not just you know, slightly bigger and slightly wider and slightly taller. It's hugely wider, longer, taller, you know, bigger, stronger, better, whatever you want to, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I just feel that this is, uh, has been overly ambitious in its, uh, in, in looking for, for planning permission for this site. Um, I'd be interested to hear what other people have to say, but I, I think that certainly in terms of, the, the two neighbours, that this the massing of this proposed development um, is is way above what what would be um, acceptable um, for the plot in in relation to uh, the other buildings in in, in the uh, the vicinity. Sorry, Councillor Hiller, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I agree with Councillor Hogg. I, I think this um, design is excessive. I think great um, um, play has been made on the, 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 the reasons for special character areas. I, I have the local plan here in front of me, and I've um, read this. One of the reasons for referral to this committee after the officer's refusal initially was um, whilst the site, and I quote, uh, the, whilst the site is located within the Thorpe Road, SCA, it is important to recognise that this was introduced to manage the subdivision of plots rather than to be overly restrictive on the design and scale of house extensions. I, I don't accept that, I'm afraid. Um, it's very clear if you read LP20 and, and the designated paragraphs within LP20, it is very much about the design. It's not just about, it is related to subdivision, but it's not just about subdivision. So I think that's a little bit disingenuous in all honesty. And section C, I agree with the planning lawyer. Um, section C about design is relevant here. Um, and it's huge. Um, this is already a prestige home. So let's not get too excited about executive and prestige homes. And we need to have these things for the people that have got lots of money and entrepreneurs and captains of industry, it's already there. Um, a, a sensible, uh, a modest, a more modest extension would be acceptable to our planners, we've already heard that, rather than this warehouse type extension that, that we're presented with this afternoon um, and its scale. Although, although I have to say, Chair, my, my biggest concern with this application is for the owners, Mr and Mrs Dalton, for the owners of 188 Thorpe Road uh, on, on Friday's visit, Chair, we witnessed the the sheer imposition, this doubling of the size of this property and increase in height would have on, on Mr. and Mrs. Dalton's garden and the, and the low nature of the design of their property. I think let's not forget that. It would loom, and I'll use that word loom, it would loom way above their own house. It wouldn't be just a glimpse, as Mr. Machen says, and that could be, um, but the fact that he hasn't actually been around there and seen what the imposition of, of this potential extension would be. I, I think the proposed design is fairly characterless, as our officers, I think, have already said in the report. And it doesn't pay any regard, in my opinion, to the designated special character area criteria, which is very clearly laid out in LP20. So I'm supporting the officers. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else wanting to debate? Councillor Rush and Jan. Yeah, looking at L what Councillor Hiller said, uh, looking at policy LP20, LP section C of the design, must be respect scale, mass and depth and materials. I think this is um, goes against what it's saying here. And also when on Friday when we visited 188 and we stood in the back garden on the lawn and to see how this was mass above their, their garden, I just think it, it's wrong. For this this application, so I will go in with um, officer's recommendation. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, I was also on the the, the visit, um, and what I have I've been 
incredibly impressed by all the presentations this afternoon. And one of the, the joys of being on this committee, as difficult as it can be, is it makes you stop and think, and, and, and I do value the debate talking with people. And um, the one thing about it is that, uh, yes, um, Mr. Machin has spoke extremely well. It has made me stop and think. Is it fear of change? Is it, are we going along with LP20? And one of the things that I, that, um, you know, this possibly appeals to the conservative in me, with a small c I hasten to add, um, that I, you know, how do I feel about it? How would I feel about living next door to it? And as much as I've been swayed back towards um, going for this sort of, uh, you know, I think LP20 at the end, Councillor Robinson spoke just about hanging on to this area, a more modest design, something that perhaps was more in keeping would have greater appeal to me and it appears many of my colleagues. So on balance, I am inclined to go with officer recommendations on this occasion. Thank you. Councillor Jamil. I'm going to give a dissenting view. Um, 1940s, this was, well, I would say, the bee's knees, this is where you'd want to live. Today's entrepreneurs, business, captains, industry, this is the next stage. This is on the edge of my ward. So if you go down Westwood Park Road, that part of Thorpe Road, all those houses have been extended from what they were in the 40s. Now, I'm not saying that that makes it all right to accept this, but I'm looking at the design and for me, the design itself is actually making an enhancement of what it is. Now, I, it's, everyone has their own taste. Everyone, you know, you can like it, you don't have to like it. But for me, I, I just, I, I'm finding myself agreeing with Mr. Machin. And I, for one, will be asking the committee to go against officer recommendations. Thank you. Councillor, do you want anybody else? No? Okay, fair enough. My turn. I'll, I'll put it in, in very simple terms. Looking at what we've got, um, you know, is committee willing to accept the impact on this character and the character of the area? Is it willing to impact, uh, accept the impact on the special character of the area? We've heard about LP20. But as importantly, is impact on the neighbours? is very important you know uh, the overbearing nature of this to the neighbor you know though you know what i'm like about site visits and if you'd have been there you'd have seen it or you'd have probably been able to accept what it would look like let's put it like that it's a huge development it's as simple as that i don't think there's any getting away from that and i think councillor robinson was spot on it's about the air is about and i'll quote that look that feel this wouldn't in my view look nice or feel nice. 3.9 meters from a bathroom, clear bathroom window, irrespective of the balcony. I know officers are happy for that to do, but would you want to be effectively from me to you, Councillor Sharp, to a clear bathroom window? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Ragging again. I agree with Mr. Kelly. I totally understand why you, you would like to do what you'd like to do, but this just isn't good enough and you need to go back and have another think. The extensions can be done, things maybe officers will be, will be happy to accept, but it will, I couldn't accept this. It's too big, way too big. It, it needs to be extended in, a, in a, a kinder way to the area to respect the character of the area, and that's my view. So I will be going with officers and refusing this application, or recommending anyway. Anybody else? Do I get a proposal from anybody at this stage? Councillor Hiller, for your proposal, please. Yes, I'm happy to propose, Chair. Um, I propose we accept the officer's recommendation and refuse the application for the reasons outlined. Clear enough. Uh, seconder, Councillor Sharp, you're going to second that? Okay, so we have a proposal and a seconder, so we'll go to the vote. All those in favour of the proposal? And against? 
Any abstentions? Oh, two of those, right. Any abstentions? Um, down the vote, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. That's uh, nine for uh, two against. Therefore, the application is refused as per the officer recommendation. Yep, so the application is refused. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Now, that's more like what uh, planning meetings should be like. So they're sort of getting away with 45 minutes. Yeah, that's a bit longer. So, But they have been good ones. They have been good ones. And I'd like to thank you all. I thank the officers all for your time. And uh, excellent reports again, as always. And thank you very much to your new staff. They did really well. And thanks, councillors. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you. And the meeting is now over. <laughs>